What's up, nerds? How's it going, Vaishtar? Rhythm Prism. Baron. Do not put me on pizza. Enkidu. Eternally Blue. French Fry Apocalypse. It's me. I'm the nerd, says Tara. How's it going? Hey there, Scragganoth. Duke of Lameness. Kaza. Amas. And all my lovely Lurker crew, how y'all doing today? Happy Friday. For one, you've successfully made it for most of another week. Yeah, we did eat some dirt yesterday. I can't blame it all on bad luck. Um, you know, there are, there are some days you have it and some days that you don't. And uh, yesterday, well, I didn't have it. And today I feel like I might have it. So I'm definitely excited to make a fresh attempt Add a new streak. There is something to be said for losing a bunch of runs in a row, actually. Each, each run does provide a little bit of a learning moment. Even if the learning moment is uh, just a reminder to do something you already knew to do, which is to say, um, play slowly and think through your options. Uh, and definitely part of my, uh, my problem yesterday was that I was playing far too quickly. Not not allotting enough time in the run, particularly actually in Act 1, where I think that time needs to be most allotted. Perhaps explaining three back-to-back -back Act 1 losses. Um, this first one was the one that caught me off guard, where we got surprise Exordium Thugs that just bonked me to death very quickly. This was the one that I felt like was, was particularly unlucky, although I, I wonder with the early Toxic Egg if I could have made some more conservative choices. It's also a good reminder that some of the most threatening things to Ironclad are those difficult hard pool fights in early Act 1, especially as early as 4th Floor. The Quad Gremlins or the Exordium Thugs can be really, really nasty. Starbuck with the Prime Sub in the 24 months. Has it been this long? It sure has. You think Save Scumming ever teaches you something useful? Definitely. Definitely. Save scumming in, in Slay the Spire, that is to say, save and quitting to restart a fight, it can teach you about the, the right way to route certain fights. You can learn, um, you know, the numeric value of certain things, such as playing a demon form versus not playing a demon form on your turn, doing something silly like blocking. There's a mod called Run Resumer that can help you... Uh, ch try stuff like that. Take a different route in the fight. In some cases, it, y you'll only learn to optimize for the particular draw order or attack pattern the enemy had, but there's a, a sort of a more valuable lesson in making early trade-offs in fights uh, in order to get ahead. I came into uh, gaming as a, a very big sort of save scummer. Um, one of the first games that I played a ton of is the uh, old computer RPG Baldur's Gate 2, which, I, as, as perhaps some of you may be aware, recently had a sequel. Um, but that's a game where saving and loading from states is basically mandatory because it's a game where um, you get an instant game over if the player character reaches zero hit points. And being based on an early version of Dungeons and Dragons, there's a whole heck load of just save or instantly die effects scattered throughout the game. So at any given point, um, your main character can just fail at one saving throw and then you get a game over screen. So um, saving and loading is nearly required to progress through uh, Baldur's Gate 2 specifically. N not impossible to do without, mind you, but uh, a very specific and very challenging kind of playthrough. I think almost everybody who's played that has done a lot of saving and loading. Stuffy says, yeah, BG2 even poked fun at it in the expansion pack, having an, an NPC party of level one characters that that save load if if they try to kill like they they try to kill you it fails 
they save load and then they, they go on their merry way. But recently I've come to love the, the roguelite genre, the, the no reroll, no reload, um, stick with your, the, the consequences of your choices. Um, but hand in hand with that goes games that have, the game has to be fair in order for not save scumming to, to be a thing. And I think that's, that's why save scumming is kind of core to the memory of, of BG2 for me is that BG2 is in no way fair. It has so much BS that gets thrown at the player. It's, it's quite funny. Have I tried any Steam Next Fest demos? We played Zet Zillions on stream for a sponsored segment, which is part of the Steam Next Fest and has a, uh, a demo out and found that actually quite a jam. It's a very radically visual styled deck builder. Kind of like, I don't know what it's kind of like, actually. It's quite hard to draw comparisons. Let's go an intro noir. Actually, I think that's why I like Zetzillion so much, is that it's quite unlike so many things. Let's go and junt. Hyper stylized, yeah. Definitely. Let's go and black level the cat. There will be some against the storm today. That's my plan after the Spire is um, uh, more against the storm. Diving a little bit deeper into our second Queen's Hand playthrough. We'll have to do some, some storm crunching. I think of all our secondary games at the moment, that's the one I'm enjoying the most is against the storm. Bystar says the style seemed very cool, but was there substance? What I'll say is that on the player side, the deck building seemed a little lacking. Seems like they need to add a bit more hard interactions, as well as sort of passive effects that can modify your cards. As it didn't, it, compared to Slay the Spire, you get like one, maybe two relics, and then things that resemble power cards seem like they're pretty rare so it's mostly a bunch of different cards that do do damage and, and block although there's two different ways to effectively deal damage we're talking about uh, zet zillions here however on the enemy design side i saw some pretty interesting stuff it, it looked like the the bosses had special mechanics that required adapting to um, it looked like the overall encounter design was really challenging and it seemed tough. I didn't see anybody succeed between my attempts or uh, the couple streams that I watched. So it does look promising. I'm curious, curious what it'll feel, what it will feel like once they flesh it out some more. Yeah, that and that's al that's also looking at it from a state of zero unlocks. So it, it might be that the proper deck building tools just weren't actually being shown to me yet. But a promising looking game. I'd, I'd love to revisit it upon uh, the full release, see what it, the finished product is like. Oh yeah, so um, we haven't made it out of Act 1 in a, in a little while. Slightly embarrassing, but that's okay. Gonna take stock of our options and carefully decide what to do. You know, I'd really like to go four elites there, up the side. Let's mark this in red. This is a tough path and not something you can do idly or easily, especially since you're pretty much committed to the elites once you get on this path. There's no avoiding them, really, except for this one. So one would have to be very well prepared. Maybe that's what an early shop is for. Um, no, wait. Mark these in red. Yeah, you'd want four combats to prepare for this many elites, or maybe a shop in lieu of the event. Um, more passive, easy option. We can get the Burning Elite. Mark this one in green. Hmm. So you'd either go... 
for this elite. We can branch off. Actually, we can also branch off from here. Hmm. Although that would require going through the shop, which speaks to maybe this option. We go up the middle here, and then we have a choice to either go for four elites or take a fire, hit a shop, and then try to get the burning elite. I like those paths as options. We could start this way instead, but I have the option to go this way, but I don't I don't know what I would see this early that would make me want to go this way instead of going the four elite path. So yeah, let's let's delay the decision point as late as possible. How's it going, Mistress Tess? Do I have a kind of room that I like the most? I like elite rooms the most. They're the most rewarding, and the fights within them can be pretty interesting sometimes. As a general rule, I would not recommend visiting too many unknown rooms. They are definitely fun, especially as a new player. Um, but the key thing about unknown rooms is that they do not give you a card reward, generally speaking, whereas enemy nodes do. And right at the beginning of a run, you want to get to a lot of card rewards so that you can start to build your deck. Is the snipe worth considering at a 50-50 chance here? It's only this snipe, right? Can't ever snipe this elite. No, I can't. I, I don't think I want to consider the snipe at all here. I think I'm just taking seven max health. Josh B with the six months of support. That's true. The question mark rooms can sometimes stab you. Let's see. We're drawing at most two strikes next turn. And they're going to do four damage apiece. If I strike the enemies, they go to nine health. So striking each slice one time means that I never kill next turn. So I think that means we've got to do bash defend. So then the question is who we bash? Front one or back one? I think front one. Back one could do eight damage on its attack. It's more likely to do six or seven. Although the red one might not attack next turn. Uh, even if it doesn't, I want to kill it shortly. So yeah, defend bash the red one. How's it going, Red Rum Rising? Got you from A3 to A20. Well, well done. Let me just strike, strike, defend. That's less damage taken than double defend. Only one of these had had 14 hit points. But still, not a bad fight by any means. We lose 4 health, gain 6 health from Burning Blood. Anytime you're positive from the first encounters on Clad, that's a good thing. So, something I'm going to try to do for at least Act 1 here is uh, rank my choices from each card reward. It'll make me take a moment to actually stop and consider each one. So, we got Hemokinesis, trade health for damage at one cost. Great card for the early game. Definitely slaps elites. Good card for fighting for elites. I could see that being okay. Flash. Zero cost deal 14, but only if you have no other non-attack cards in your hand. Pretty awkward card. Do not recommend. Sever Soul. Two cost. Exhaust all non-attack cards in our hand. Deal 16 damage. A card I'm coming to appreciate a little bit more these days. Never Soul can get rid of statuses, and it's not that bad damage-wise, even though it's not as good as some of Ironclad's other two-cost attacks in terms of damage. It is better than Clothesline. Hard to evaluate between Hemo and Sever Soul here. Clash is definitely after skip. I'm currently leaning, I think, Sever Soul, Hemo, Kinesis, Skip, Clash as my ranking here, with a very close one and two for Sever Soul, Hemo. Normally, I like uh, Hemokinesis Floor 1, but I do like Sever Soul's ability to get rid of statuses from Slime Boss, as well as a couple other side benefits. So, I'm going to go with the Sever Soul here. I'm also increasingly valuing on Ironclad, having access to that, that first card that can get rid of other cards. Uh, we've seen a lot of runs lately where you go through the whole game and you don't find a way to exhaust another card. No True Grit, no Second Wind. No 
burning pact. So in a world like that, having a sever soul doesn't feel too bad. Look, it does 24 damage with uh, Bash. That's pretty good. We're full health here. We score a Duplication Potion. Our next card is played twice. Also, I'll know this doesn't cost us hit points like Hemokinesis does. And our second card here. So, previously we were just discussing also the, the danger that uh, the hard pool of Act 1 poses to Ironclad. As early as Floor 4... You know, this question mark could be a combat. Then we're looking at five combats in a row. One of those second combats could be one of the nasty Act 1 combats, which are all multi-enemy fights. All of them. Um, five slimes, four gremlins, a thief plus an ally. Cleave hitting multiple enemies helps in all of those situations. Dual Wield and Sword Boomerang are pretty awkward early game. I really don't like Sword Boomerang's random targeting for the exact same reason that Cleave is good. Sword Boomerang is bad here, as random targeting will split your damage between enemies. If I was going to rank these, I think it'd be Cleave 1, Skip 2, Sword Boomerang 3, Dual Wield 4. Maybe Sword Boomerang slightly above Skip, but only very slightly. I'm taking that Cleave. All right, what's our first event? What's in this room could really shape the run here. It could be trading health for a bonus. It could be gaining a curse, and we have no choice about it. Um, or it could just be a fight. It's the woman in blue offering us potions for money. And with um, hopefully four more elites coming up, I'd love to look at a couple more potions. Maybe give me the full deal here. Seems very unlikely that I don't go Red Path at this point. We've already got two good cards, um, and simply having two potions, period, was going to be a requirement. Let's pay three. That way we get to look at the most options. Heart of Iron, Block Pot, Power Pot. It's got to be Heart of Iron, surely. This is a, a basically a, a free solve to the Sentry's fight, although you can argue the same about the Power Potion. This one's just really convenient. And I like the Dupe Pot more than the Block Pot for something like Gremlin Knob. There's no fight I can think of where the Heart of Iron isn't as good as or better than Block Potion when it comes to the Elites of Act 1. Although you could argue that I could take the Block Pot, use it in one of these two fights, and then get another Potion. I still think the Heart of Iron's better. I just shouldn't be afraid to use a Heart of Iron if we're in a tough fight. Okay, let's do that. Fizor, thanks for the prime sub. Welcome to the Cozy Sub Club. Her strongest potions would kill us, chat. I, I like these two potions quite a lot. Cleave, look at you. Cleave does eight damage. That's more than six, and that means one strike finishes the spike slime, so we can block in peace. Taking seven is... Fine when we're at full health, but is it though? Because we're not able to kill now. So we take another seven, really. What an aggro slime. Surely this is never worth using the dupe pot to save seven here. Well, I mean, there's a 40% chance we get another potion. Kind of weird. We really don't want to get a potion drop here. But I have no control over it, so... We had three more defense. This was the reasonable play. All right, all right. Deal your seven. Fine. See if I care. No potion. Okay, good. We're offered in flame second cleave or flame barrier. In flame barrier. In flame is the first strength card we've been offered. It's a really nice way to scale in the early game for Ironclad. Not conditional like spot weakness. You just draw it, you play it, then you're strong. Strength is good for all sorts of things on Clad. Works well with Cleave, too. Second Cleave does give us even better options against AoE fights. I'm not so worried about AoE fights that I would really think Double Cleave is worth it, especially not when I could just have Inflame. Flame Barrier is good if we want a block card. Going into... These early elites, though, especially with a Heart of Iron, I don't feel like we need block nearly as much as we want more damage. 
So I would rank probably in Flame 1. Leave 2, Flame Barrier 3, Skip 4. These are all better than skipping, for the record. Let's take in Flame. Yeah, all three of those are better than skipping. Aha, and we found it. A freaking difficult fight again. Freaking fracking. This might be worth the dupe pot. Because once again, we're taking seven, pretty much unavoidably. We are at 50% chance to get another potion here. Uh, and I see that dupe pot sever soul cleanly kills the acid slime. Is the thing. Next turn, we get attacked for 11 by the fungi beast, but we can... Let's see, within flame, we can do 8, 8, 10. It'd be one short of a kill. 10 plus 15 is short of a kill. If I strike, instead of in flame, we can do... Bash cleave is 20. Okay, we can never kill it next turn, no matter what I do. I'm going to do pot this uh, Silver Soul. Yeah, we did get the best damage draw, but it's still not quite enough. It will take six. That's fine. Perfectly fine outcome. We do get a potion, a block potion. So I feel pretty good about that dupe pot. How do I feel about Anger, Iron Wave, or Evolve, though? Evolve is spicy looking. I really like Evolve with Sever Soul. Also, do know that we're fighting the slime boss at the end of the act, which makes Sever with which makes Evolve pretty good. And Evolve is good against the three centuries elite fight as well. Competing it with it is Anger and Iron Wave here. Anger I like a lot within Flame. Hmm. Hard to choose here between Anger and Evolve. Iron Wave and Skip are pretty close here. I think I would give a slight credence to Iron Wave going into four elites in Act 1. It's just a little bit on the weak side, but with the strength it gets a fair bit better. So it's, it's not a bad Iron Wave. It's just that these other two cards are much better. And a dad joke for the crowd, courtesy of Sakian. Did you hear about the clad who ended up with too many cards in his deck? He was sentenced to anger management. The main advantage of anger here is that it helps us more in the upcoming Lagavulin and Gremlin Knob possibilities than in the slime boss fight. I think for the short term, this uh, anger is probably better here. I'm not so worried about sentries thanks to Cleave. Heart of Iron. We should shore up our defenses against the other two. So let's go Anger. I would Anger number one, Evolve number two, Iron Wave number three, Skip. Is how I how I would rank these. Bimrin with the Prime sub in the 38 months. We would replace the starter deck cards with commons on each character. What do you think would be the most optimal card for each character? Start Defect with four Claws and four Cool Headed. I'm not even kidding, and it's actually insane. Or uh, four Claws and four Holograms is also almost fine, except the Holograms exhaust, so you'd have to upgrade them. Watcher would be Cut Through Fate Prostrate. I think that'd be insane. Silent. Backflip. Hmm. I don't know what the other what the attack should be. I almost want to say backflip flechettes, but that's probably not true. Blade dance would be fine. Poison stabs would be actually pretty solid. 
Slice? Maybe, yeah, maybe just backflip slice. Actually, that'd be really, really nice. Backflip slice. Oh yeah, Flechette's is an uncommon anyway. And then Clad, would it be Pommel Strike Shrug? Is that is that too easy an answer? Maybe that's too easy an answer. And there might be a better one, actually, of the Clad Commons. Anyhow, we're going Red Path here. We have two good potions, we have lots of hit points, we have a pretty offensive-oriented deck. We've added only damage cards here. Um, so even if we're short in terms of, say, number of turns to kill Grum the Knob, we should be pretty good overall. And I think what I'm going to do is just use the Heart of Iron right now in this fight, because it'll block six every turn, and that will give us a lot of defensive wiggle room here. So how much damage are we going to do next turn with the Inflame in play? Ten. And I could theoretically play all three of these if I wanted to. And these are each eight. So ten to each. Eighteen goes to twenty-seven. So I'd only have to dedicate one strike. I think it's going to be Defend Cleave. Anger Strike next turn. Yeah, let's just go Silver Soul here. Two less damage to Strike Strike, then I would keep one Defend. Defends are actually really good. Um, does that mean I wouldn't kill, though? Let me just double check here. We do 16 plus... No. Er, yes, yeah, 16 plus um, 18 is 34, right? Yeah, that wouldn't kill. So it has to be Silver Soul if I want the kill. Okay, that's fine. Could have used our Block Potion here. Maybe should have. I think we target this one. I'm never killing this one next turn. Well, never say never, actually. But I'm probably not. Oh, I totally was. Can I still get it? We can do 16 plus 18. Yes, that still kills. Badass. This doesn't kill, but we do have a full block. Thanks to Heart of Iron. Okay. Very good first elite. Hopefully we can... Yeah, I was going to say, hopefully we can use the rewards to make the remaining elites easier. Um, and we get first reward preserved insect, which bodes well for the red path here with three more elites. All future elites have 25% less health, and we get a damage potion. And we get a disarm, iron wave, or thunderclap. Actually, not a very good disarm, but I do like having it for later. And with the current rewards, I feel like we can get through the next elite fight with or without a disarm. Let's grab this disarm for later. So, ranking choices here. Disarm 1, Iron Wave, probably 2, Skip 3, Thunderclap 4. I don't like Thunderclap that much, although it's not bad with Cleave. Actually, this is an example of an okay Thunderclap. With uh, with the strength and the cleave, but I, I just don't like it that much. It doesn't do enough. You can't make it apply too vuln. You can't really make it do good damage either. Not not easily. I think we upgrade in flame for the next elites. Although the one could make an argument for bash upgrade here. I really just like getting that plus one strength usually. Could also upgrade Cleave for better AoE, although less reasonable to do that immediately after beating sentries. If we want to upgrade Cleave, it's better to do it here, probably. Plus six on Sever Soul is also a very reasonable upgrade. This is one of the better attack upgrades that we have. Maybe that's our next upgrade after the Inflame. Tiny Knob. With the reduced health, I don't think that I need to Flex Potion here, but we could consider Flex Potion on this turn for quite a bit of bonus damage. I'm going to say no. We do 26 on this turn. We just have to do 40. 
Uh, we can't do 40 with any of our next turn draws, but we should be able to get 40 in two turns very easily. Yeah, we get 24 plus 12, so we can spend the flex pot to block eight damage. It's a pretty valuable potion, especially into the slime boss fight. Could block pot for eight here. Actually, we can do an expected value calculation on this, right? We're at 30% chance to get another potion. Block pot. Wood block for 12 in a best case scenario, but is only blocking for 8 here. So. We. Wait, that's the right way to phrase this calculation. We want to multiply the expected health savings by the chance that we're going to get a new potion, I think. We're not guaranteed to kill next turn. Oh, you're right. Actually, there's only one strike in the draw pile. Hmm. That does make a more compelling argument for Flexpot. Or the, maybe the argument is 8 health versus 30% chance of wasting a potion, 70% chance of saving more health, or more health specifically. So 4 health times 0.7 versus a random potion times 0.3. I think that's the way to, to phrase that. So I mean, average potion is 12. We'll make this easy. <laughs> Let's assume an average potion is going to be the same potion, which is 12. So 12 times 0.7 versus... We're getting what? 4? Four? 4 times 0.7. Evie says we are overwhelmingly in favor of the new potion. So I say we use the potion, although, again, with the revealed additional information that we're only at five out of six to actually get a kill, maybe we should just use the flex pot. I really don't like looking at that draw pile, right? We're at uh, 24 plus 12 is 36. So the strike kills, but it's not a guarantee. We could draw a defend, defend, and flame, ascender's bane, disarm. Already showing why having this disarm is, is kind of a... Kind of an awkward thing here in Act 1. We, we did take that preemptively, and those are definitely the sorts of things that can punish you. If I don't get a kill, I can still full block? Full block. That's quite a generous term. Now, what will happen is that Gremlin Ob will smash us in the face for um, quite a lot of damage. <laughs> quite a lot of damage. A fool's block, perhaps. I'll use the flex pot. We don't get the potion, mind you. But we do get the evolve. Although I could have had evolve second win. I feel kind of bad about that. I think I'm still going to take an evolve here, going into slime boss. There's also an argument for centennial puzzle hemokinesis. I like this evolve. Raw on statuses, please. And thank you. I changed my mind. I'm going to this chest. Inside is the boot. Be gone, foul beast. All right, we didn't get a relic. That's okay. I think I do upgrade Sever Soul. Again, it's that or Cleave. Cleave is a nice upgrade, actually. Let's upgrade Cleave. That's as much as plus nine. Well, actually, could be plus 15 in one specific fight. And then, yes, elite, combat, elite. You can decide combat or event at the very end. Sentry's rematch says to me that upgrading leave is going to be a good choice. Having the evolve will also pay off here. So far, we've had pretty good luck with the elites we've fought. 
put you to 21. Feels like a pretty good number. Draw eight. Hmm. Seversoul Anger would kill, allowing me to play Evolve. That would mean skipping in Flame to get Evolve down. Or what? That's better than Double Defend Evolve, probably, although I would keep the cards. Burning cards is not bad with the Evolve. Any other options? We could play in Flame... Strike, strike, anger, then I don't get the evolve down. No, we have to play evolve here. So I like this line. Evolve, sever soul, anger. Picking 10. Looking like we might carry this block potion into next act, although we can just use it for 10 health right now. It's a pretty good chance. Hmm. 40, 50, 40, 50. Pretty decent odds we get two potions from here. I'm going to use it. Fluctuation EM, thanks for the 49 months. In the prime sub. Guaranteed Silver Soul. Boot thingy. Start combats with 10 block. Always happy with that, although it doesn't help much this act. Whirlwind, Blood for Blood, Juggernaut are here. This doesn't feel like a very good Juggernaut, but Whirlwind I can maybe get behind. It's a great Act 2 card, especially with smaller elites. Uh, also, we're fighting Slime Boss, which makes Whirlwind decidedly more appealing. Blood for Blood feels... not that good, maybe? You know, I'd rather have an Immolate than Whirlwind, but I'd rather have an Offering than Immolate. But I call Juggernaut good here? Not really. Not with just four defends. We have no reason to believe Juggernaut is above average at the moment. I think this would be quite unwieldy, and we already have a couple powers, so I don't want it. Let's grab the Whirlwind. Bin to win. Oh, Whirlwind Skippers in Shambles. Get wrecked. One might argue we have enough cards. But it's hard to say no to a Shrug when we have no block yet. As I go Knit Lion, we are indeed trying to get 20 A20 wins in a row. And yes, that is insane. Is Blood for Blood better than Skip at this point? Shrug, Skip, Blood for Blood, Twin Strike? Taking Shrug. And now for the Gremlin Knob rematch of the century. Didn't get any potions yet, but that's okay. Go bash strike here. We have so much health that I, I don't I don't mind if we take a small hit here. Let's see. We play three strikes, deal twenty seven, bringing Gremlin Knob down to twenty three. Can I do twenty three next turn pretty easily? As long as I draw Sever Soul and Cleave, we're gonna get eight out of nine cards, so it's not a guarantee. Maybe I should have shrugged there actually. But, uh, all is well. We kill the knob. We score a Ma Bank, giving us money every floor until we spend money at a shop. Pretty reasonably timed Ma Bank. Um. Oh, and a Reaper. Should I take the Reaper? Or should I take the Havoc? Tough choice here. It's not a tough choice. Reaper is awesome, especially when we already have it in flame, as it can heal us for each target hit. We also have a higher than normal max health. 
which gives me a lot of reasons not to take an event here. I would like to take another combat. We want to find a second potion. We want to not find a store because of Maw Bank. And we want to not find an event that lowers our max health because of Reaper. So I'm going to take the combat here. Get disarmed, fool. Nothing Reaper can't fix. But I have to draw it first. Actually, this might work out. I'm not weak next turn. Take my seven health back, please. Lex is kind of interesting with uh, Whirlwind and with Reaper. That said, I feel like we've already added maybe too many cards for Act 1. What floor does Potion Lady start showing up? Yeah, floor, floor 2. She can show up at the start of the run. Or as upgrades go, feels like Whirlwind is a good upgrade for the slime boss and for Act 2 in general. You really do need to upgrade it so that it uh, it does max damage per hit. Don't leave Act 1 with 30 cards. It's uh, not usually the goal. You can if you want, though. All right, Mob Bank, earn me some cash. Evolve Strike Strike, I assume. I'm okay if we have to tank the big hit from Slime Boss to set up a better split here. We're not all that good at single target damage. We've got lots of AoE. But we can't crush one target that quickly with the current deck. Inflame Bash surely sets up our best hope of splitting next turn. there is any hope. Let's see, we can do 28 plus 21. We have guaranteed Reaper for a lot of health coming up next turn. Um, so that's uh, 28 plus 21 is 49. 114 minus 49 is 65. So that would split and prevent 38 damage. Seems worthwhile. Unless they maybe want to speed pot, double defend, cleave. I don't think so. I think I'm pretty happy to do Cleave Sever Soul. Next turn we can play Reaper and Strike. We'll get hit almost assuredly, but we'll be at full health and we have Centennial Puzzle. So I'm okay with that. And the goal is just to draw back into the strength boosted Whirlwind and Angers to win. We've deleted our defend cards um, and the slimes draw more cards, so that shouldn't be too hard either. Yeah, we don't even get hit that hard. Target the front one, as it will guarantee to attack us next turn. We want to split this one now. Not a particularly good draw, but I'll accept it. We can do Bash, Anger, Strike on the front one. Hit it very hard. Next turn we have some AoE coming up, and we can hopefully finish off the Wounded Limelings that are going to be created. Yeah, they only have 12 health, so just the cleave will kill them. Take another 12, but 12 is fine. Base is the place. Hello? Where's my AoE? All right, Shrug is guaranteed to get one of these two cards. There we go. Bottom deck the Whirlwind, huh? Blitz at 32. So we can do 11 more damage. Actually, I should have just split it, because then we we knew we were drawing the Whirlwind. Whatever. It's all good. Blind boss is down. We're out of Act 1 successfully. 
for the first time in days. No. We're doing better now. So, cards that delete other cards. Pretty good. I like that Fiendfire can combo with Evolve. I like that Fiendfire works with Inflame here. I like that Fiendfire works with Centennial Puzzle. And we were just saying how we don't have very good single target damage. Well, here's probably one of the best single target attacks in the whole game. So, a lot of things in favor of Fiendfire here. Meanwhile, Juggernaut, not that good. We just talked about it. Bludgeon, kind of like a more expensive, less damaging Fiendfire that doesn't have all the side benefits of exhausting cards. So, um, I like Fiendfire more, is what I'm saying. Fiendfire number one, Bludgeon number two, Skip number three, Juggernaut number four. And that's being generous to Bludgeon, really. Let's take a Fiendfire. We get 12 more gold on the floor with the boss chest. It is a separate floor. And we're offered the Philosopher's Stone, the Sacred Bark, and the Astrolabe. I'll tell you right now, this is a very easy choice for me, personally. Very easy choice. However, we do at least want to consider the options. Philosopher's Stone provides energy. Energy very valuable in any deck with an X cost card. I think just two cost cards in general also like the support of additional energy. Things that make Philo Stone easier to take here include Anchor, preventing turn one damage. So as long as we can spend that energy to kill early threatening enemies, the Anchor will help us avoid taking damage in the process. Um... We also have Disarm to remove that strength, and then some, particularly against Heart, where it's most scary. Disarm completely negates Heart's extra strength. So that, that makes Philostone quite attractive here. Astrolabe, transform and upgrade three cards. Probably would do three strikes. Astrolabe is definitely unreliable here. Doesn't give us every turn benefit like the Philostone would. And depending on the cards, it could even make the deck worse. Although it's pretty hard to get three upgraded cards and have them be bad. I think it's it's solid here. I, I like it more than Sacred Bark. Meanwhile, Sacred Bark doubles the strength of our potions. Kind of a predictable way to gain bonus. You gain a, a, effectively extra potions in the fights where you spend them. So some of your fights are much easier. But many of your fights are much harder. Again, because you don't have that per turn benefit like the Philosopher's Stone does. I'm in favor of Philostone, yeah, and also, as noted, um, for the specific threat of the Dreaded Birds, we have a Whirlwind, which goes to four energy, which could instantly defeat all of the birds. So birds are not even scary. Makes maybe Snake Plant one of the most threatening things, and even Snake Plant's not that bad with the Anchor and the Disarm. Does give us good reason to upgrade that Disarm, though. Do we ever go for an Act 2 Burning Elite here? I think we should consider a shop. Yeah, I don't want to go the whole Act without a shop, even though we have Mall Bank. Um, it would be pretty hard to do this with only going to shop starting in Act 3. So that, that instantly rules out going for the Burning Elite, if, if I'm saying that I want to do that. Or we could go for the Burning Elite now, try not to spend any money. Currently, we don't beat our Act Boss, the Champ. That's true. I think that's mostly true. Which speaks to going to shops, looking for answers to our Act Boss, the Champ. We have to keep in mind here in Act 2. Your Act 2 Boss is definitely the big scaling check of your run. And if you're not ready for that, then you're not ready for anything. Top chance, I believe, resets at the start of the act. Yes, it does. So we start at the base 3% chance for a shop, according to InfoMod. Your event floor outcomes from a previous act do not matter. Boom shika wow wow, thanks for the 11 months of support. Thieves! Probably Shrug. Shrug defend is full block, but do I want a full block? Actually, no, it's um, no, it's one short of a full block, which is perfect. So yeah, Shrug defend 
in Flame Cleave, probably. We'll see what we draw, though. Yeah, just another defend. So I don't want to completely full block. I don't want to play this defend, because I do want to draw more cards. Let's see, with the Inflame, Whirlwind would be what? 11 times 4, yes? So only by striking the front one do I turn Whirlwind into a kill. So it sounds like I should strike the front one then. Normally I advocate going for the back one first, but here the hit point difference matters quite a bit, it looks like. Okay, we got Cleave, Reaper, and Fiendfire. Fiendfire can kill this one. Is there any way to get them both? I don't think so. Although, let me double check. We could do Anger, Cleave, Strike, Fiendfire. But Fiendfire is only 10 per card, so there's a limit here. To use six cards. So I can actually only play one thing and then Fiendfire, right? Maybe it's just Reaper, Fiendfire? Actually, if I play Reaper, I can play another thing. I could do Reaper, Anger, Fiendfire. Bash Fiendfire? Unnecessary when Fiendfire kills. Unless you mean bash this one, then Fiendfire. That makes more sense. That is more sensical. But I think I'd rather just play Reaper. Get back the 5 health. Sounds like our best move. We anger you. And then, yeah, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 times 10. Yes. Okay. Seems like a pretty good fight overall. Get our money back. Get another shrug if we want one. With Fiendfire and four energy, I do want another shrug. I don't want a perfected strike or a war cry. Arkan Ike, thanks for the prime sub in the two months. Easy streaks every time. Easy lose max health every time time. Ow. I don't want to curse, so ow. So be it. So be it. Okay, what do you got? Bird nerds! Uh-oh. Oh no. <laughs> We've been countered, Twitch chat. They said it couldn't happen to us, but it could happen to us. Bummer. Well, at least I can down one of them here. Get the one with the most health. Ouch. Bin to win. I'll be taking my health back, thanks. Hello? Didn't play the inflame, huh? Bummer. Eight back, though. That's not too bad. These are not that good. Is a power pot better than a speed potion? Speed potion's a little bit better with the shrugs, but it's still pretty mediocre. Power potion can be all sorts of fun things and is a way to be potentially beat champ. So as a back pocket, please don't die to champ option, I really like this. Let's pick that up. Demon form in a can, or corruption in a can, or even rupture in a can can sometimes do something. Get back-to-back -back shops. Interesting. Plus one strength is tempting. Another in flame is tempting. There's lots of healing potions here. Bird-faced urn would heal us for powers played, but seems unnecessary. Shop skip? I think you're crazy to skip Vajra here. Plus one strength is awesome. 
in this position. Boost the Reaper, boost the Whirlwind, boost the Fiendfire. Prototype, thanks for the Prime sub of the nine months. Tom says, I notice you're l less fond of Artifact Potion plus Speed or Flex Potion than you used to be. I might have started valuing the Artifact Potion on its own a bit more. I've also recognized that a, a lot of times, even in boss fights, you really only need that bonus on one turn if you if you time it well. I'll buy the Vajra. Thinking about Inflame here. Second in flame would be a pretty good anti-champ measure. And it doesn't put me out of range of another relic either. Though it does put me out of range of remove, which is spooky. Maybe I'm not allowed. Let's not buy this in flame. Let's go next. Okay, now I can buy Feel No Pain instead. Feel no pain. And that's either card remove or toolbox, but toolbox is my beloved. Feel no pain toolbox sounds really good here. Feel no pain will block per exhausted card. We have fiend fire, we have sever soul, so uh, this feel no pain is very good. But yeah, can't quite afford toolbox plus remove. Take the box. What's in the box? The answer is Hand of Greed. Hand of Greed is in the box. We also get to upgrade. That upgrade should definitely be the Fiend Fire to further improve our single target damage. Against uh, Gremlin Leader and Book of Stabbing. This is the way we killed them. All right, who are we facing for our first elite this act? Our, our goal is to get three. With the Reaper, I'm hopeful that we can sustain our way through this, but we'll see. First up, a miniature giant book of stabbing. Oh, God. Help. Stark Shackle still saves nine. I, I might want Swift Strike, though. We need to win the damage race here. I think this is an easy strength potion. I could do Reaper to heal for quite a bit, huh? 10 health. Then I'm not dealing a lot more damage. I'm truly looking to damage race this thing. Well, hold on. If we draw the Bean Fire next turn, we're winning basically no matter what. If we don't, we're getting attacked for 8 by 3 which I can probably block. So yeah, I'm thinking Bash Reaper Swift Strike with the Strength Potion here. This is what they call the Zeknar pattern, yes. It's a 15% chance the book will attack you with a big strike on turn 1, which does 25 damage instead of the usual 7x2, but then it still increases the multi-hit counter, so it goes 25, then 7x3, then 7x4, which is just rude. Draw eight cards here. We do get Fiend Fire, so we just kill it. Right, 19 by 7 is a ton. We get a block potion, and we get a second boat thingy. The turn three boat thingy, giving us 18 block. That's great stuff. We want a third shrug it off. Not an unupgraded one, I don't think. There's a limit here. Pretty short story. From Pensive says, that pattern with Philostone is still lower than damage than Slavers over the first three turns. Well, yeah, because if you go three turns in Slavers without killing any of them, you're dead. Does having full potion slots change when I'm willing to use a potion? Yes. Yeah, it does. It has to. I choose Violence? Yeah, because I want Fiendfire turn one. Rug first? No, just... Yeah, just feed fire. 11 times 7 brings it very low on health. Put Reaper to heal 5? 
we deal quite a bit less damage in that case, which makes it much harder to kill next turn. I think we should just Fiend Fire here. No faffing about with other cards. Oddity with the Prime Sub and the 16 months of support. A dad joke for the crowd, courtesy of Saki and What is a snake's favorite subject in school? History. Should make these say plus game. I would take them if you did. Keep skipping. All right, we get another relic, and then we find another elite. Relic is Art of War. For playing no attacks on our turn, gain extra energy on the following turn. That's pretty good. That can definitely do things. And we face a miniature gremlin leader. This dramatic entrance conveniently kills this one. Also thinking about bomb or just secret weapon whirlwind here. Actually, or secret weapon in um, Reaper here. Secret weapon, please. By secret weapon Reaper, we heal for 15. That's not bad. But it does look better to kill both minions this turn. So I'm going to get Whirlwind. This to be at least three times, right? So yeah, just play this. Good. Mm -mm. I think Bash Strike. Tempting to Reaper there, but... Looks like we missed our chance. I'd rather just get a perfectly clean kill on this fight. Yeah, 16 by 4 kills. Blocking, not really an option, right? We just go for the kill. Perfectly happy with that. Beating, beating an Act 2 Elite with zero damage always feels good. Stone Calendar is kind of cool. I actually quite like Stone Calendar for the champ fight specifically, because you can you can kind of time it to help you with bursting champ down. Three more mediocre cards. Rupture won't scale us. Headbutt is not exactly useful. Anger doesn't seem that helpful. We have already got one, so I think skip these. We're hoping to take something before champ. Another strength card. A power. Our draw. True Grit would be good. True Grit would be very good. Just Fiend Fire, no Disarm. I think just Fiend Fire, no Disarm here. Good Shrug first. There's a couple bad hits, though. Like the uh, Reaper. So close. All right, well, that's a good block pot, I guess. Could defend as well. Try to save five more. The real shame that Whirlwind is only too short of killing here. Whirlwind once we go to 29 with draw 8. And I have 18 block for free. Let's play the defend here. Wow. 
They all cost three. Rude. I'll play this ever soul. That worked though. We saved uh, health by playing that defend. Imolate. Hmm. Is that necessary? I don't think it is. It does work with the evolve by creating burns. Let's do AoE damage, but we have both Cleave and Whirlwind for that. We're not fighting an Act 2 boss with multiple minions. And I have Preserved Insect to make Repto easier. Captain Shocker, thanks for the 20 months. This is the start of it, I believe. Yeah, seems a bit outdated. Seems a bit latte. I'm going to skip that Immolate. Feels weird. Not even a multi-enemy fight. Not even the rude pattern. Go defend Fiendfire. Still hopeful that this power potion kills champ for us. Oh, that's weird. Hmm. Hmm. Could be a good distilled chaos moment. Bash into distilled seems pretty reasonable. Let's do it. Nice Reaper. Wow, that almost killed it. Um, so then we just defend, because this will always kill next turn, from the looks of it, right? Yeah, we can shrug, cleave, sever soul, always. So just play defend. Good turn. Strike dummy. Or it's containing the text strike, deal three more damage, making our strikes hit just a bit harder. If you're really panicking for a way to kill champ, rampage can be it. We're not panicking that hard. You also need a true grit to make it actually work. Yikes. Um. <laughs> Jack of all trades or trip here? It's a really rude opening from these two. Not mayhem. No, it's either trip to try to kill the mystic right now or jack of all trades to try to make panic button or dark shackles or something. Jack of all trades could even be trip. I'm going to trust Jack here. We got Jack. Jack has the bomb. Jack might be onto something. Jack knows what's up. Sever Soul, then Reaper heals the most. Getting bombed. So they'll both die. We're back to full health. Feels good. Heavy Blade. That's some single target damage. I think that's actually the card we're missing here, is Heavy Blade. To go with our Inflame, to go with our Vajra. To go with whatever strength we get out of the Power Potion. We need to be able to turn that into a dead champ. And I think Heavy Blade is the way to do it. Let's go. Not often I take an unupgraded Heavy Blade here in Act 2, but uh, here we are. Also, Panacea sounds great. Smell you later, bird nerd.
You get free block next turn, which helps a lot with this turn. 33? That would be ridiculous. Just die. Tasty. Toasty. Okay, we can take a second wind. That's kind of cool. Does that actually help me here? Not really. Not against champ. Because we don't have a way to make statuses yet. Maybe that immolate was more important than I realized, but honestly, Wild Strike might be better than that immolate. Strongly prefer, prefer a Reckless Charge or a Power Through, anyway. As for upgrades, I think we should upgrade the Heavy Blade. This is going to be our damage plan for killing Champ here, hopefully off the back of bonus strength with the Power Potion. As far as Power Potion goes, our best hits are probably something like Barricade, Demon Form, maybe Dark Embrace, but we'll run out of cards to exhaust. Metallicize is okay, Inflame is pretty good. Really, really hoping for Demon Form in particular. And then, yeah, lining up with Stone Calendar to, to try to burst down the champ here. I'm not 100% sure this will work. Purity seems like it might help. All right, Power Potion, what do you got? Juggernaut or Inflame? Hmm, Juggernaut versus Inflame. Juggernaut's pretty good with the Feel No Pain, actually. That's a lot of added damage. So probably Juggernaut. That way the Fiend Fire will do a lot more damage as well. The Flame is 10 damage on the Heavy Blade. Whereas Juggernaut will be 5 per card on the Fiend Fire, and Flame is 2 per card on the Fiend Fire. It's actually kind of close. 10 damage per Heavy Blade does tick me in the direction of Inflame. But yeah, we have to draw the Feel No Pain first. I think we'll be able to do that, although we might not be able to get the, the Big Hand exhausted. Also does double duty on Second Wind. Works with the Captain's Wheel, works with the Block Potion. I'm convinced that this is good. That said, I think we're in for a relatively tough fight here. Let me get rid of this now. Okay, there's Feel No Pain. going to block pot. Yeah, that seems like unnecessary. It'll be just as good later. Mm. Not a very good fiend fire turn, huh? This is Cleave, second win, the one defense. I think so. Yeah, we want to try to push on turn seven or so. Turn seven would be a good turn to bring Champ below half health. Okay, this is a good Fiend Fire. We get rid of three strikes, one defense. I'm getting a little worried here. And this will do 15 by 4, 60 damage. So 273. You don't have the draw for a better fiend fire than that, realistically. So, Stone Calendar next turn means we want to do as much damage next turn as possible. This is pretty good, actually, in terms of timing. We can block pot now, but there's still no need to. Looks good so far. 
Yeah, we can do Sever Soul Cleave. Plus the bonus from Stone Calendar. Next turn, we Heavy Blade. We're not going to be weak. I think this is our best chance here. Although I'm not sure it'll be enough. Stone Calendar with that extra 52 certainly helps. We now have two turns to kill Champ here. He has no Metallic, uh, only half the Metallicized value, but still, I don't know. Maybe we have to survive this hit. Looks like we're a little short here. I think we have just enough face though, right? This is 66. Oh no, are we just shy? Um, we have 43 plus 12 plus 12. 43 plus 24 is 77? 67. Let's, we'll live on one. Jeez. Live on one. Unless you're telling me bash, anger, anger, cleave kills. Let's do some quick math here. 12 plus 22 plus 30. <laughs> Love it. Two off, right? Like, we almost kill him, and then he kills us, and there's nothing we can do to survive. We're completely dead now, and we lose the fight. That sucks. Rip. Shame we died there. Now, for Act 3, what do we want? Statuses are looking a little better. Maybe I do want Immolate. Second Fiendfire, also pretty spicy, right? Second Reaper feels maybe too ambitious. So it's either Fiendfire or Immolate. I think it's Fiendfire. Good job, Juggernaut. Coffee Dripper plus Reaper is usually nice. There is Mark of Pain here, which one could make an argument for with Evolve. I don't like it very much, though. Any house is the opt-out of a real relic option. Get a bunch of stuff. Mediocre, I say. I want energy. And I want Coffee Dripper. And since we have Reaper to heal, I shouldn't need to rest at rest sites. Shouldn't. Doesn't mean won't, but shouldn't. All right, we got a nice generous Act 3 path here. Do I want Shop before or after Elite? I think I want it after, because I won't have enough money for a Dead Branch at this shop. But I will have enough money for a Dead Branch at this shop. I'm not that afraid of elites, right? Does Giant Head mess us up? Giant Head might mess us up. Hmm. Although it's a miniature Giant Head. We could face a giant miniature Giant Head, and that would be... bad? Question mark? That would be bad question mark. I'm sure we'll figure it out. Do Shrug Reaper here to heal the full. Onto Apotheo. Let's kill this one. Be back for the Reaper. We can do this. to leave you alive. It's fine. I have evolved. All is well.
We just let that calendar kill. We get a fruit juice for some max health. That's not too bad. I noticed that we don't have any way to make our enemies weak currently, and we do have five energy. So spending two energy on a big paunch sounds pretty good. We will have to upgrade that card if we don't find a real apotheosis, but I think that's worth it. Chaos247, thanks for the 13 months. Fighting against Silent A17. Best of luck. It is, it is definitely tough. Definitely tough. We do seventeen plus twelve plus twenty seven. Do fifty six. Perfect. Although I might have wanted to kill the middle one, leave that one alive so that I could draw more cards here. Whatever. Seems to be fine. Pummel Plus scales really well with Strength and says Exhaust. What about True Grit, though? Finally a way to exhaust a specific card. Give me that. No transmutation here. Could cleave second wind. And sever soul? Oh yeah, that's perfect. Let's get rid of the exploder immediately. Once it's down to these three, I don't mind them, because we have this powers. Powers make this easy. Powers and stone calendar. Say I wanted ways to make statuses. How desperate am I? Wild Strike at this point is pretty desperate. And I have to upgrade the Evolve too. I don't get that many upgrades. Upgrade what? Evolve, True Grit. Am I doing unupgraded True Grit? Maybe. Seems awkward. Uppercut. Yeah, Evolve True Good Uppercut. Reckless Charge is what we want, sort of. It's bad. I'm, I don't know. I don't think I'm that... I think it'll be fine. I'd rather not. Please no. Please no. So we immediately run into a situation where actually I want it. Oh well. What are you gonna do? Um, Fiendfire or Uppercut Strike here? I think just Fiendfire. Although if I Uppercut, the Vuln stays for next turn and we get extra draw. No, go Uppercut actually. Saves me health too, kind of. Didn't get second fiend fire. Bummer. The 
this isn't enough, huh? Not quite. Okay, that was a little painful. Nothing we can't necessarily get back with a Reaper. Upgraded Flex or a Battle Trance. We're pretty desperate for card draw, so as much as Flex is tempting, I think I'm going to take Battle Trance here. Meyer, thanks for the 29 months of support. Cheers. These two are pretty tough, but I think the deck can handle them. And a bonus rare relic is very good. Yeah, one fiend fire for each of them. Okay, we get evolved down early. Also, they make lots of statuses, and those are good for us. Let's go evolve. Probably Bash Cleave. Bash Cleave looks good here. What happens if we draw both Fiend Fires at the same time, though? Looks like we don't have to answer that yet. The 18 by 4 kills, yes? That's 72. Yeah, so I should just play Whirlwind, kill this one, and then take 17. And then we kill with Fiendfire or whatever. We have 18 block next turn, so the solo one's not that threatening. This is good. Okay, this is realistically how we wanted this fight to go. Although I would have preferred being able to get a little bit of health back. This is perfectly fine. All that for Ginger, making us immune to weaken. Wouldn't call that an amazing reward, but here we are. Here we are. And now for Nemesis. Getting a little worried here. Nemesis could definitely cause us problems. If the attack pattern is nasty. That would qualify as nasty. Yep. Yep, we have problems. Ouch. Well, the good news is we're not instantly dead. The bad news is we don't have any hit points left. Nor do we have any block at all here. Good news is I draw a lot. And I can play Reaper into Fiend Fire and get some of this health back. Uh, 16 times 6. 96. So 2 is a kill. Okay. You do 2. Went for the 44 again. Totally would have killed us. Good news is we get a ton of health back, though. Pantograph and a blood potion means things are not as dire as they look. And an upgraded feel no pain says, well, whenever a card is exhausted, gain four block. Now we have something that can work. That was kind of spooky. I don't think we need the Evolve upgrade until here. We should upgrade either Uppercut or True Grit, depending on which one we think is more important to have upgraded. I think it might be that True Grit. Let's do that. And our Burning Elite will be... a Metallicize Miniature Giant Head. I guess that's not too bad. Cleave, Whirlwind, Anger. I'm not that good at doing damage is my current concern. I don't have a lot of health. 
Yeah, this is not good. This could maybe be more healing later, but I don't want to draw it again later. Spooky. Good news is we're immune to weaken at least. This turn looks real tough. I think this has to be bash into fiend fire. We lose both fiend fires. We get the feel no pain plus next turn, but it won't do much. We're going to be doing something like shrug, defend heavy blade or something. Iffy. Do I rate the Reaper upgrade highly? Nope. Not generally speaking. Okay, that is half of the damage we need to do. Almost. We're not weakened here, but 39 damage incoming is certainly not what you want to see. At least I have enough healing to tank it here. I'll drink both potions if necessary. Looking spooky, though. I think I need to put the Heavy Blade back in the draw pile, too, unfortunately. Means playing it before shrugging here. Alright, yeah, let's drink this and then this. So we have enough health to survive. Um, with the draw pile as it is, feels better to play a strike than the feel no pain? Surely it does. Get us closer to that kill. Yeah, if this doesn't kill, then we're dead. And it might not kill. I'm not actually sure this does. We've got Sever Soul. Actually, you know, Anger first. Least to most damage is the order. So we go Anger, Strike, Strike, Cleave, Sever Soul. I don't know if this kills. But the slow will help. Each attack does more than the last. 16, 21, 30. We're just shy. The Metallicize actually killed us. GG. GG. Not quite enough scaling for this deck. Um, actually suffering from a lack of status generation, which would have made the core mechanic work. That was a, a tough run, but very well fought. I think we had pretty good odds if we could just make it a few floors further. Uh, I do wonder what things would have looked like with the second inflame. But not quite enough damage there. GG. GG. Would Mark of Pain allow to win over the Dripper, maybe? I don't know. It's it's actually really hard to say whether Mark of Pain would have made the fight better or worse. Finding another better option for scaling certainly would have helped. But uh, you don't always get the best options. We didn't see any demon forms. wonder if we could have done stuff with Rupture. Maybe if I'd taken the Hemokinesis first. But I stand by the Seversoul. Seversoul did good work. If I decided to focus on Ironclad, yes, we're currently focusing on Clad. Any tips on the Deca slash Donu fight? Focus the Donut first. Stop the scaling. Stop them from gaining strength by killing Donut first. Tell me two cards to add to this deck that would have won the run. Offering Demon Form. Although those are both rares. I had to nominate Uncommons. Dark Embrace... Dark Embrace? <laughs> Just two Dark Embraces. No, that's that's cheating. Um, yeah, Dark Embrace Power Through would have been would have been really nuts. Freaking Power Through, man. I kind of want to know how Giant Head plays if I had taken Wild Strike, but without Evolve upgraded, it's not even draw positive. So whatever. But yeah, Power Through is probably one of the biggest difference makers we could have seen. Um, actually, that's the big thing we could have done, right? That that we didn't do was 
uh, we we didn't go to the shop early in Act Three because I didn't have enough money for a rare relic. But maybe what I needed to do was look at and evaluate that we didn't beat Giant Head, um, and so I needed to go to a shop early in Act Three to be able to beat Giant Head. That's probably the one thing I could have, in retrospect, looked at a little bit more analytically here, is seeing that we needed to spend money immediately, because we did die with 444 gold, which is not a good sign. Oh well. That was a pretty good run. I'm actually quite happy with that, even though we did lose in Act 3 there. Next up, we're going to go again, running with the clad, seeing if we can keep applying what we've learned here. Before that happens, it's break time here at Twitch chat. I'm going to refill the legs, stretch the water. When I return in a few minutes, we'll be playing some more clad. BRB.
All right, Twitch chat, the wait is over. And we can begin once more a journey unto the spire. I think we had a perfectly, perfectly good attempt last run. Didn't go the distance. But we had this foundation solid. And just a slightly different outcome would have worked out really well for us. Hmm. Eyeing 100 gold into an early shop here. Hexaghost is our act boss. Yeah, I'm perfectly content with that. Random rare, risky, 18 damage for transform to very risky. This could go very badly, very fast. Like we're talking 20 health into the shop here. <laughs> like real bad. But does go pretty well some of the time. I'm thinking we do one of these two options. Actually, pro probably the yellow option here. It means taking an elite with no rest site beforehand, but we do get a relic and or good card from the shop. And then we get a bunch of upgrades after that. One, two, three, four upgrades. Three elites plus 100 gold bonus shop. Sounds good to me. Finally got a run where Bronze Automaton stole your curse card. You'll love to see it. Uh-oh. You hate to see it. Y'all worm no? Y'all worm why? Ow. Y'all worm yes! We never kill next turn either, no matter what I do. That's really bummer. Terrifying. Extra terrifying. Okay. Yeah, imagine if I'd taken a bad transform start. We could just die to that pattern. Spooky. Um, Arma, Dropkick, Fire Breathing. I don't hate fire breathing going into Hexaghost. It's better than Dropkick, surely. How about Armaments, though? Armaments is okay in the early game. It's actually not bad going into a couple more easy pool fights. Can make up for the fact that we don't have an extra card for the elite either. Hmm. But this is an acceptable fire breathing. You really have to respect Hexaghost on Ironclad. The ghost can mess with you. I do love Arma, though. Probably, even in this situation, I think I'd rather take Dropkick over Skip. So probably maybe one Armaments, two Fire Breathing, three Dropkick, four Skip, if I was going to rank these. Although, again, I don't know which of the two is better here. If this was Slime Boss, I think it'd be 100% Fire Breathing. If it was Guardian, it'd be 100% Armaments. Against Hexaghost, it's kind of close. Fire Breathing does help with sentries, meaning we'd have to pick against Laga and Nob. This is best against Lagavulin. This is okay on sentries, though. I'm taking Arma. Okay, slight gain of health. True Grit, Clash, or Thunderclap. Well, I think the time has come. Take a Thunderclap. Can't really take two skills out the gate. As much as I do like True Grit here as a second pick. Maybe if we really load up on attacks at the shop, but I don't know. I think we need that... Uh, that extra Voln and the extra tack in general. Don't think we can take this True Grit. 
I will take it. Filthy bird nerd. Remember, a thunderclap strike is one more damage than playing two strikes. Okay, and you should be fine next turn as well. Good cultist fight. I like that. Is Clash really that bad? Clash is really that unreliable. Yeah. You showed you my waffles. Can I have a joke? You can, Potter Putty. You can. You must but think of one. Did you hear about the man who was stealing marinara sauce? He was caught red-handed. No refunds, to shut. So we've got three options for common attack here. My ranking would be Pommel Strike 1, Sword Boomerang 2, Wild Strike 3. Yes, you heard it. Wild Strike 3. Skip 4. We've got to take one of these. Almost Strike's definitely my favorite. Damage and draw. That draw matters quite a bit. We still have a shop and another fight to prepare us for the Elite coming up. Let's see what the shop has. It has a Dark Embrace. It has a True Grit on sale. And it has an Orrery. Orrery can be quite strong. Also just go Dark Embrace True Grit here and, uh, you know, call it a day, quite frankly. It's a power combo of cards. Although we're definitely behind on damage. I almost feel like if I if I do Dark Embrace True Grit, I also have to buy the Fire Potion to make the uh, next Elite manageable. So that would mean not buying the Orary. Scat. Thanks for the Prime sub in the three months. Just want to be part of this cozy sub club? Well, guess what? You are. Yeah, the Dida Gremlin Ob starter pack. I'm a bit less afraid of Gremlin Ob with the True Grit. Hmm. Very nebulous, the benefit of Ori. But there's potentially some good stuff. It is possible for an Ori to contain 15 rares? I think so. I remember something about Ori using the rare chance from the shop, which is higher than the rare chance from a regular card reward. But it depends on how true that is. Ah. This deck is never killing Grumlin Ob in three turns. No way. All right, we should buy the Ori, looking for damage options. Maybe there'll be a Dark Embrace in here. Combust is an option. We can take the True Grit. True Grit, feel no pain. Air Breathing is back. Feel no pain. True Grit. So we take True Grit, True Grit, feel no pain, feel no pain? No, I don't think we should do that. <laughs> but I want to. I most definitely want to. Double drop kick. The power. <laughs> double True Grit, double Drop Kick. Sounds ambitious. Combust does help. Probably more than Fire Breathing. Start with that. Our best offense is not very good here. Leaning towards Combust. So we have some better damage against Sentries and Gremlin Ob. Although we don't need as much help against Sentries with a Feel No Pain, actually. Good against Hexagos, too. This is just garbage. 
Ooh, feel no pains feels too much this early on. I don't think I can get away with that either. Actually, with two sources of Vuln, the dropkicks aren't that bad. And it does give me a way to go infinite. You know what? Screw it. We're doing it. Although I think I still have to buy the fire potion. Infinite. Invenient. Have a spooky turn one. Praise Thunderclap. Curse drop kick. Oh no. Oh no. Terrible. Kill the middle one here, yeah? Are we really infinite? For very generous definitions of infinite, yes. As in, we can eventually form an infinite combo on turn 15 of combat, maybe. Another Pummel Strike does help piece it all together. A Rage would uh, would also be appreciated. Could have gone double Feel No Pain. Whatever, this is arguably our easiest Elite, so I'm not going to complain here. I think I still use the Fire Pot to kill one? Not true. I'd have to skip Feel No Pain? Ugh. Now we need to not skip Feel No Pain. Guess I'll take 20 then. Seems fine. Okay, now things can be made vulnerable. Oh, good. Let's get the middle one next. Mo, thank you so much for the 100 bits. For the dropkick greed. For the fire potion greed. Hey. Okay, that could have been worse, I suppose. Get a Panagraph, healing us at the start of the Hexaghost fight. Third dropkick. Is that... good? Let's find out. <laughs> Screw it. Sentry's the rematch. Scarred by flames in this event indicates that we'll fight the three sentries if the adventurer returns. I have two potions. We can definitely take this fight again, and I can rest afterwards. Let's go. Find loot. We found enemies instead. This time I want to kill one of them fast. Take five on turn one. Let's 
Ooh, actually, we can use the weak pot here to make all three drop kicks live with this thunderclap. We do seven, 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 nine, twenty-one plus nine. Do one short, but I get three draws. So this is worth it. Okay, wait, no, and I forgot the drop kick, uh, the thunderclap damage. So we do kill. Nice. That's a great turn. Triple drop kick showing off. I'd like to upgrade feel no pain, please. No luck. Upgrade that then. This run deck runs on bananas and spite. Pull these drop kicks out of the deck, please. Thank you. Okay, that was not bad. We use the weak pot, not the fire pot. We get a strike dummy, making all of our strikes, including the double pommel strike, deal three more damage. We're offered a juggernaut, rupture, cleave. I don't feel like we need any of those. Although Cleave comes closest to being useful. We just dealt with sentries twice in a row, so no, we don't need Cleave. Yep. Given the whole triple dropkick thing, this does seem like a good time to upgrade Bash. Although Arma, True Grit, the Pommel Strikes are pretty good as well. But yeah, this feels like a Bash upgrade to me. Bash upgrade into maybe Rest, depending on what the chest has. I don't feel that good with 27 health going into potential Grum the Knob. If we bottom deck the Vuln, we could take more than 27 health of damage to Grum the Knob, even with a Fire Pot. Juggernaut to go with Feel No Pain here? Oh, interesting. So expensive, though. Be a very early Jug take. This is not the worst idea. But I think our I think we have scaling kind of sorted out already with the drop kick, so we're not looking to use powers like this. Although we can't drop kick Hexaghost. Presumably. We'll have to beat Hexaghost in a more traditional way. What do we got here? Mercury Hourglass. Three damage per turn every turn. Would have been useful before I fought double sentries, but oh well. Not enough of a difference to make Grumlin Knob not scary here, though I'm thinking that we rest one time, just to be safe. That way we're allowed to take another elite fight. Because if I upgrade here, we might die to this elite, or even the fight after the elite if it goes badly. So let's not do that. It is Grumlin Knob. We do get Bash Dropkick on turn one. Exciting. We should strike because it does quite a bit more damage than, than, than Thunderclap. Actually, with the strike dummy, we might have enough damage here. Maybe I underestimated us. Certainly I did. In fact, we get a two-turn kill. What am I on here? Complete waste of an upgrade. Oh, well. Could you build a deck around... Could you build this deck around Sadistic Nature? No. I, I really don't think it works... Sadistic Nature works on Ironclad at all. Ironclad just does not do enough debuffs. Even if you had multiple Thunderclaps with um, Champ Belt, it's it's not that good. Silent can make a deck around Sadistic Nature, but I don't think Ironclad can. Would I snap pick Rampage? Oh, the questions that they ask me. 
I don't hate this bloodletting. Deck has quite a bit of card draw thanks to double pommel strike. Extra energy could help us out. And ink bottle draws more cards too. So I'm going to grab this bloodletting. Stacking a little bit of health for a bit of energy. Full blocked. Get hourglassed. Full blocked again. This isn't going to go in your favor, Slime. But quit even trying. Hmm. Uh, that's a really good split if I just defend here. Take seven. Or I can play Pummel Strike. In the 28. We can kill one of them next turn. And I've got a Fire Potion for backup. This is fine. Both attacking. But I only take three this time. That was a net gain. Good. Set up ink bottle. Okay, we probably don't want to add too many cards to this deck, although Bloodletting Whirlwind with Thunderclap is tempting. What's our answer to multi enemy fights, anyway? Hmm. It's not a concern right now. Your pot's very good, actually. I don't want this Snicker Whale. I'm going to upgrade... Rugrit? And then maybe Arma. Give me sentries one more time. Ah. That's not sentries. Not sentries at all. Oh well. Have 18 damage to your face. Just keep the Vuln up for next turn. You know, this is actually kind of working. Ornamental Fan. If we play three attacks in one turn, we'll gain four block. That makes doing a drop kick infinite a lot more viable. If only we had strength for Heavy Blade. If you play three drop kicks in one turn, gain four block. Rage at home. Okay, but how do we actually kill Hexaghost here? We upgrade Pommel Strike. We upgrade Arma. Yeah, let's upgrade Arma. I'm a little bit afraid of Hexaghost, but we have a lot of health. Actually, too much health. Hexaghost is going to wreck us on turn two. Uh-oh. Please don't kill me. Strike Dummy is going to go a long way here. So is uh, Mercury Hourglass, believe it or not. And we never miss Voln because of Fear Pot, so I'm not too, too worried. Yeah, just kill on turn two. Easy. Easy, easy. Just kill on turn two. Now you're talking. Mm. Yeah, I'm afraid of this fight, so let's just start right now. Seven by six, but I do get to play three defense here. Oh. So that's enough health left to survive Inferno, notably.
Delete. Defend. Delete defends. Lots of vulnerable applied, meaning these drop kicks will work pretty consistently here. I'm wondering if we want to trade damage a little bit more here. Certainly we want to be with this. It's a Volnub. Looks like we're on pace here. Feels good. That's right, you get two burns from Siron, the highest ascension. And yes, it is miserable. Just miserable. GG. We're through the fight and with a potion to spare. Too bad. We're offered feed, limit break, demon form. Feed is interesting. What was demon form? Where we're headed, we shouldn't need demon form. But that's only if we can speed this up with more card draw and more energy. Let's try feed here. More max health gives us more resilience, more time to set up in fights which is the way for us to win. Runic Cube, Pandora's Box, Busted Crown. Ooh, that's a pretty good Pandora's Box, actually. Although Strike Dummy says, questionable. We would get nine transforms, and every transform that isn't a striker defend could be something we could boil out of the deck with True Grit. Other option, Runic Cube, whenever we lose health, draw a card. Works nicely with Bloodletting and our deck in general. But I'm willing to open the Pandora's box here, find out what's in the box. I don't like Busted Crown, limiting our card options. That seems extra spooky. Let's go with the Pandora's. Transform nine cards could be amazing, could be terrible. We get another drop kick, another thunderclap, thunderclap drop kick, and very importantly, we get a burning pact. The rest is just garbage attacks. So we got quite a bit of bad stuff here: rampage, searing blow, blood for blood, all pretty bad. But burning pact, thunderclap draw kick—that's what we wanted. So not terrible. We have no defends, but we have ornamental fan. Our biggest fan is here to defend us. We're also going to be aggressively removing the bad cards from this deck at shops. I do mean aggressively. Uh, we remove Searing Blow to start, and then probably Sword Boomerang next. Blood for Blood seems like it could be really good. Expanding Flan says, I tried making a Searing Blow deck once. I, re I would recommend trying it again. It's actually pretty good sometimes. Um, this is an awkward fight because of artifacts. I think we suffer in this fight quite a bit, actually. It's got to be Arma, Thunder, Thunder, and then we can play Bash. But I don't think that'll be enough to save us here from getting destroyed by the 11 by 2 I can't even play Bash. Um, so let's Pummel Strike instead. All right, now we can do it. Okay, I was actually lying when I said it wouldn't make a difference. Oh, we're so close here. All right, I'll be back for you feed, maybe. Bummer. It's not worth taking 11 to maybe feed. Upgraded Pummel Strike, that's great, because it does 13 damage and it draws two. I do want more draw at this time. 
If I get a Peace Pipe, would I rather upgrade a card or remove a card at fire? With this deck, I'd, I would want to remove as many cards as possible. For sure here. This deck wants to remove cards more than anything else. In fact, if I could, I would remove all of the cards in this deck except for three or four. Which Act 2 hallway fight would make the most fair Act 1 elite fight? Chosen would be pretty reasonable. Yeah, Chosen is just Gremlin Knob, kind of. Kind of. Could buy a waffle here, but it's not that much health, right? We get 17 plus 7, 24. 24 health for this waffle. That's pretty good, but I don't think I need it. There's another shop coming up, so I'm going to save my cash. We're not making statuses right now. Although Evolve does help with a drop kick type deck. Bird nerds get destroyed. Good. Like that turn one just fine. Uh oh, that's not good though. But I do have T clap into pummel here. Could be a good time for the fire pot too, actually. Hmm. No. So there is no need to potion here. Go bloodletting. Fumble strike. Feed. Take four. Next fight might be an elite, so setting up Ink Bottle is actually very reasonable. Health goes up. There's the Rage! Whenever you play an attack this turn, gain block. Heck yeah! That card's awesome. Stinky power through, no way. Give me a rage. The ragening begins. And I think I want an event over a combat. I think so. Now all of our cards say block. Do I read the book? I don't really want Necronomicon. Or Nilri's. Readings for nerds. Nilri's could be more drop kicks, but I don't need more drop kicks. I need less non drop kicks. And Nilri's is never that. I think I say no for once. We don't read the Cursed Tome. Consider buying another Rage. Oh no! No! That's fine, actually. Uh, let's lose the Rampage. Ocart Monster with 24 months of support. And I'll get back here. Actually, another Rage does seem kind of awesome. Even though it ostensibly might slow us down. I do love it, unironically. Let's try double Rage deck. A 
Let's try double rage deck. But we want to upgrade Burning Pact first. We do. Hard draw is the only thing that matters at the moment, I believe. We're going to face off against the Book of Stampening. Let me add some wounds. I'm going to call a little potion here. Secret technique. Allows me to burning pact. Feel no pain, secret technique, burning pact. What does that actually get me towards? Nothing really helpful here. Just taking swift strike is fine. It's a free 10 damage. And yeah, we're going to draw one off ink bottle in a moment as well. Oh, Strike Dummy! That's right, it does even more damage. It's actually 15. Well, good. We do get Bloodletting. That's actually amazing. Because then I get to full block. And do a bunch more damage. It's a good turn. We should just play Bash. So that the future drop kicks work. 13 block just from playing three attacks. This is a really cool deck. This is Arma Trigrit. Looks like it. Put the pommel strike on top. I think I had a feed there. So I might have. Still hard to feed, that's okay. Feel no pain plus? Tempting. However, fiend fire. If this deck is going to do what it wants to do, which is reduce the deck down to only drop kicks and Rage, then Fiendfire's ability to exhaust multiple cards at the same time is exactly what we want. And we already have one Feel No Pain, right? No, we, uh, Yeah, we do. We do. We do. Upgrades from here are probably more card draw. The Pommel Strikes, the Feel No Pain's tempting, the Rages look actually really good as upgrades. Get the rages upgraded. Then we have a real source of block. Ooh, cheap removes. Get in here. Good reason to go to two or even three shops next act. Go this way. It's all about the removes from here. This is vaguely tempting. Use this now. Thunderclap is more block than Arma is. Cute. I'll allow it. I'm not going to be able to feed on this thing. That's true, actually. Although I can get more regen, so I should at least do that. Okay. 
I don't need a third thunderclap. Fighting bronze automaton. I think upgrading our card draw is the only thing that really matters. Ooh, I'm really happy to fight these three. They'll give us the Red Mask, applying one week on turn one and crucially removing one artifact from enemies that have artifacts. In addition, they're not that hard to kill. Holy Dropkicks, Batman. Holy Rages, Batman. Could have played Rage for one more ink bottle there. Next kid. Empire doesn't kill bear. Oh well. Do 18, 15, perfect. Delicious. Havoc can delete cards, but it's unreliable as all get out. I'm not desperate enough to take Havoc here, I don't think. I don't think so, anyway. Ooh. Let's turn one. Take this, Shelled Parasite. Thirty-four block with the Rages. Unfortunately, now both Rages are in the discard pile, so this turn's kind of miserable. That's just how it is sometimes. Good news is I can still eat this fool. Not bad. Second wind deletes cards. So does True Grit, though. Most of the cards in the deck are attacks, so probably the True Grit, actually. Okay. So this is the real test. The Bronze Automaton fight. Does the deck do the thing quickly enough or not? I don't actually know. That's a pretty good fiend fire. Just delete these four cards. We have two drop kicks and two more upgraded pummel strikes. So I don't need any of these cards. Let's lose these. The goal is to exhaust cards other than the drop kick quickly as we can, basically. I'm going to put Burning Pact on top here. They're fine. This close line. If I bash now, I can Thunderclap Dropkick next turn. I could probably do that. Perfect. This gives me the bloodletting. Get rid of 
sword boomerang. Here we go. Get rid of Bash. I think it's working. Here we go. Er, wait. Uh, almost. Let's do bloodletting, burning pact. Now we're there. Drop kick draws, drop kick. And that'll happen in a loop over and over again. So that's good. We only took five turns to assemble our infinite combo here, which we can now use to win this fight. And yes, we can grab our feed here, and we should, so that we can also feed. Although I can't armaments feed because I did I did delete the arma. Cool fight. Would I take a dual wield? Probably not, because I already have multiples of all the cards required. Delicious. What about an exhum? Nope. More cards is really not helpful. Thought I didn't like this infinite? I don't, but... Doesn't mean I'm not going to use it to win if that's what uh, the run kind of calls for. It's the easiest winning strategy we could put together, so that's what we're doing. And you want to be really committed to this if you're if you're trying to do it. So adding other types of cards really not what we want to do. But removing cards is what we want to do. And it might feel weird to go into Act 3 on 3 base energy, but with two fewer cards here, thanks to Empty Cage, I think it's going to be just fine, actually. I'm going to lose the Sword Boomerang and the Clothesline. The Clothesline. But yeah, the smaller this deck gets, the better. Bonka Lonk, did you hear about the famous actor that decided to remove all the cards from their deck? That was uh, Nicholas Empty Cage. Gotta go here. And Smiling Mask says go here and go here. Spikers looking scary? You're not wrong. <laughs> spikers are kind of scary. Hmm, spooky. Spooky spikers. What do we need to beat Time Eater? Believe it or not, nothing. We already beat Time Eater. The two Rages beat Time Eater. Maybe an Evolve would make things a little bit easier. I would take an Evolve at this point. But we we actually are just fine against Time Eater. Uh-oh. It's happening, Chet. Help. Could fire pot to feed here. Feels like unnecessary. Be back.
Is the block before or after? After. Okay. Enough. Good enough, I say. Ooh. Hmm. I do have eighty nine health. This is tough. Yeah, this is a tough one. These two will, at minimum, do quite a bit of damage to me, although I do get a heal immediately here. I've got two pretty good potions. We can kill them relatively fast, actually. This is not that bad, as far as fights go. We don't really want the card reward, but we do want the money and potentially the relic. Peace Pipe is a rare relic, so that would be kind of huge. Dead Branch would be a skip, but we could get Burner, we could get Helix, might get Max Health. I think we're okay here. I have a really hard time imagining us dying to these fools. Really hard time imagining that. Happy to use my potions as necessary. Uh, I'm going to energy pot to bash. Bash the front one? Yeah. Bash the front one. Hey, that was super worth it. Even got the feed. Get Charon's Ashes. When exhausting a card, deal three damage to all enemies. And I don't think we want any of these. So that helps a bit with AoE. Good for Reptomancer. In case you run into her here. That's good. Uh, overall, that's pretty good. Uh-oh. Time to spin the wheel, though. Card remove, card remove, card remove. Let's go. Money. Even better, actually. This is not one, not two, but 300 gold. You get 100 gold times the act you're in from the Grumlin, and that's a great prize. So we got an old coin worth of money there, right before the shop, too. Very nice. I got 99 hit points. But what about Deep Breath? Okay, definitely we remove a card. Is it ever unironically hand drill? <laughs> Actually hand drill? Are we fighting Donu Deca? Oh shit, we are. It's actually pretty good against Donu Deca. This might be the only situation where hand drill might even be half good. The best hand drill I've ever seen. Yeah, if not now, then when? Exactly. When you break an enemy's block, apply too vulnerable. Don't mind if I do. And I guess the blood for blood is superfluous now. It is. Lantern's okay. I'm also pretty happy not buying anything here. I intend to go this way. Upgrades that are important include what? Almost strike war cry? Feel no pain. Ah. 
What about deep breath? It's an option. We can upgrade it to make it a draw one card. It's it's kind of... I mean, it does help, sort of. It It is card draw. And it can do actually interesting things with our exhaust cards. Actually, yeah, we'll take deep breath over lantern here. Let's see what we can do. Oh no, not the single orb walker. Whatever will I do about that? Little biker Nana, thanks for the prime sub in the 13 months of support. All drop kicks always has been. Don't need an unupgraded true grit. Draw one more. Falling. Armaments, feel no pain, drop kick. I mean, I've got a couple of spare drop kicks. It's actually not the worst uh, loss of Arma either. We got most of the upgraded cards upgraded already. Twitch crap the bed? <laughs> it sounds like it might have. I'm gonna lose Arma here. I like the drop kicks. And we're going to upgrade war uh, bloodletting, actually. Energy's good. Blue key from this chest. Yeah, it, now it's showing me one viewer. It's me. I'm the only viewer. You're all faked with chat. This whole thing has been a hallucination by yours truly. Do I have an answer to five burns? I don't think I do. Okay. Deep breath those back into the draw pile, then rage. Being attacked for 45? Well, guess what? It's not going to stop me. I played a uh, thunderclap there, actually. Wait, hand drill? <laughs> hand drill of the gods. Let's go, hand drill. Get the metallicize. Out of here. My turn never ends. Every tenth drop kick deals double damage. Love it. M -m -m multi feed. The enemy encounter. 
Andrill, I'm counting on you. Andrill, go! my back pocket. Don't think I'll ever need to use that, but it's kind of nice to have. Cutie alert! Don't worry, though. There's only one person on the cutie list. Panthiron, thanks for the 500,000 channel points. Spending enough time in the channel. Get that half mil, heck yes. That you added right away. Five hundred thousand hours watched. That's right, one point per hour. And IBT Dark, thanks for the prime sub of the nine months of support. I'd like to give a special moment of thanks to my lone viewer for getting me here. block, huh? Easy. Oh, you're already there. Well, let me fix that. I was thinking about looking for that, but then I chose not to. Let me fix that. There you are. All caps for you. Aha! There you go. Upgraded cutie. And Thyron Plus. And your original position in the list is preserved, too. time. just always draws a drop kick or the deep breath which then draws a drop kick. Excellent.
Entropic Brew. Okay, I'll take that. And one more elite before this shop where we get another remove. I might even start removing drop kicks, unironically, although I think the unupgraded pummel strike is actually perhaps our next best remove. Giant Head is going to have a bad time, though, that's for sure. No question about that. Giant Head has a very bad time here. It's each drop kick does more damage than the last, pretty much. Just dunk some cards here. Cards I never want to draw again. It's another Thunderclap remove. We're going to want the Thunderclaps for um, Donu and Dekka and then Shield and Spear fights. We'll help there. But for the most part, I do agree. Stone won't do much. Another Rage is not needed. Limit Break doesn't do anything. I'll take Blood Pot for more durability against Heart. And uh, Medical Kit Dark Embrace will make this so much easier than it was already going to be, going into Heart. <laughs> but here's the truth. All people in the chat are me. And now, for you to be convinced of this, I will send this message from all of my accounts. Oh no. What have I done? But yeah, Dark Embrace Medkit means life is easy. <laughs> Perhaps the only time I will tolerate a copy pasta. I do. I <laughs> what have I done? Okay, we got a recall here. Don't upgrade. Don't upgrade. Go infinite. <laughs> Embrace over double clap. Any clappers in the chat? Hmm. It's actually a tough call. Maybe it is double clap. Although Dark Embrace draws one immediately. Go double clap. I gotta get rid of these artifact charges. That way I can bash dropkick on this turn. Pendril's nice, but they actually don't get any block until turn three. Further evidence for why Handrill is so awkward. Even in the fight where you want it to be good, it's not as good as you want it to be. Get rid of that card, get rid of that card. Where I'm going, we don't need bloodletting.
card's kind of expensive. I guess I have to upgrade Dark Embrace going into Act 4 here, as we only have the three energy per turn. It's kind of hard to spend, too. Oh, Hand Drill Hourglass interaction. The power. The sheer power. Karen's Ashes triggered the hand drill. That was pretty sweet, actually. Hand drill just did real stuff there. that. This is only the first boss. I'll set up relics for um, Act 4, but I'm not going to bother for second boss. It's only time meter. Time meter is not a threat, right? Time meter is not a threat. Probably not. Is this Thunderclap Fiendfire? Keep one Vuln card? Although that would make next turn kind of weak. Oh, no, no, no. We apply lots of Vuln thanks to, you guessed it, Hand Drill. That's a good Fiendfire, actually. We draw a lot immediately, too. left in the deck, though. Almost strike, then. It's fine. Let's 
I struggle to see what we need this bloodletting for. Cards too many currently. Yeah. Shoot. All right, we can't keep this feed. That's what I learned. Bring time meter below half next turn. That'll be fine. At least hopefully, anyway. Turn time meter is purging, moving all their debuffs, so there's not a lot to gain from playing any of our cards beyond maybe the burning pack to get rid of this true grit. Let's get rid of true grit here. And we can just break the block to apply Voln, or more Voln anyway. So we need the initial. Slow and steady wins the race here. Just gotta whittle it down turn over turn, but we can make enough block each turn that it really doesn't matter that much. turn. Seems good. Now our viewers are back. Our loyal viewers. Team. I think we kill here. Pretty sure we kill here. Yeah, we do. Uh, so I guess I can't really set up the relics, huh? Not in the way you'd want to. We can up the ink bottle a little bit here. Careful. Got nervous. <laughs> what comes after eight? I don't know, but I don't want to find out, you know? To thump, to thump, to thump, a deep pulsing dread can be felt throughout the room. Is this the heart of the spire, the source of this evil? Ready your blade, deal in 2092. Have I been here before? I don't think the hand drill has, actually. Hand drill, you're new here. Welcome to the end of the game. We're healing with meal tickets, so let's get that Dark Embrace upgraded, make that nice and cheap. Do I know the highest score I've had entering Act 4? I feel like we've seen... We've seen 3,000 before. I'm pretty sure. Okay, now that we've been through Donodeca, I think we can lose one of our two Thunderclaps. 
Field and Spear will only have one artifact each, and the Hand Drill will help with them. Bean Fire is oddly bad, now that we got rid of all the junk, too. Let's lose one clap. Could buy a different potion, but I like this potion. What? Keep Bash? Because it's multiple turns of Voln, and we're going to want it during the heart fight, for sure. Feed could be removed. Although Feed gets rid of itself just by playing it. That's not too hard. But yeah, um, why keep Bash? So that I can do this. You first, I guess. Uh, hmm. Slightly concerning. Give me Dark Embrace. That'd be the easiest way for this to go down. Good. Might have a full loop already. Good. This is 57. Good. Great. Excellent, dare I say. Vuln to start next turn. Good, we're going to be full health into the hard fight. What you want to see, for sure. A surprisingly slow infinite here. Feel like we could have been there already. Now we are. Setting up ink bottle here. Yep. Blue 
candle it means we can exhaust the Ascender's Bane by playing it too. Now we can play every card in the deck. It's kind of cool. Impervious slows the deck down, but seems like it buys valuable time. I'll take that one. Onwards to the heart. Let's freaking go. Excellent turn one. We're very happy playing this upgraded bash to get our Vuln down for the hard fight. We can double drop kick turn one. As long as we have at least one rage in play, then... I think I only want one rage in play, actually. Leave this one. Okay. Good enough. Get a whole bunch of statuses added to the draw pile here. This can be a little spooky. But Dark Embrace is here. Feel No Pain is also here. Let's just play both of these. Ow. Heal me. Another healing potion and a flex pot. Cool. Get rid of Thunderclap. We can just use the bash. No need to be afraid of bloodletting in this fight. happening. You'll love to see it. Alright, we could lose a few of these cards. Um, why don't we put down lots of Vuln and then get rid of Bash? We don't need Bash anymore. Or True Grit, for that matter. We can also lose Feed if we want to. Looks like these cards are pretty good, though. This is exactly all of my cards. Let's lose one dropkick then. Don't need three of them. Want everything to fit into one hand here. So we'll take Beat of Death at the start of each turn, but that should be the only damage we take. Rage is all the block we need. Pretty cool. Yeah, Flex Potion will save us time later on. Probably on the final turn. That'll be nice. bottle for next turn as well. Well, 
my face, though. Blam, look at that heal. Bonk. And now, for our final performance. Take a deep breath and drop kick that fool. GG. Delicious. We're back, baby. Set the streak to one. GG. GG. The dropkick mastery get. That's cool. Rather unusual form of scaling for this run. Many runs try to scale by putting powers in play or stacking strength. This run scaled by looping its card draw to form an infinite combo and exhausting as many cords as we could as quickly as we could. That was great. That was great. Yeah, quad dropkick. That's cool. I don't usually like dropkick infinite because, well, it is kind of repetitive. You know, you do it in one fight and you've kind of seen how it plays. So there's a, a fair bit of time that doesn't feel like it's well spent when you're doing an infinite run. Um, and it also usually puts you in a situation where you don't want to take any cards, and that's kind of boring, too. It's only really oppressive if you try to do a combo like that on the majority of your runs. Sundial Pommel in a very similar category. Feels nearly identical. The challenge is figuring out how to get down to the infinite. That's true, yeah. So it, it kind of like Watcher runs in a sense where you, you stop playing against the enemies of the Spire and start playing against your own deck of cards with the enemies becoming kind of more or less irrelevant. Either way, an excellent run, and a good start to, hopefully, a new streak. Hopefully. However, the streaking will have to wait until next time Twitch chat, because I am due to switch games here. I'm going to be playing some Against the Storm, as the second half of stream today, continuing our Queen's Hand Mode playthrough. However, before that happens, I'm going to take a quick break, refill the water, stretch the legs. When I return, it's going to be storm in time. Back in a few, everybody. Please don't go nowhere.
All right, Twitch chat, we are back. This deck sure did go infinite, thanks to the power of medical kits. Four drop kicks and two rages, perhaps the only ironclad run in memory where we picked two rages on purpose and then upgraded both of them. I think we even bought one, yeah. We also ignored the Cursed Tome entirely, even though I had plenty of hit points. Like, we could have taken it for free. Basically no consequence. I just said no <laughs> for no reason, really. Whatever. And Wet Lotus with the Prime sub of the 15 months. Consider this a fair amount of time, fun time, great time. You're welcome. Yeah, also we bought Hand Drill, and one could even say that it did things. It gave us extra... It, it worked on the Burning Elite who rolled Metallicize, which is amazing. It worked on Donudeka, it worked on Time Eater, and it worked on Shield and Spirit. It worked in all of the key fights, actually, after we got it, which is kind of insane. For this run only, what tier was Hand Drill? Like B or C tier. We're fine without it, honestly. But it, it did save us health on a few turns by letting us skip the bash. But yeah, e even in the context of this run, it, it actually didn't help that much. <laughs> but that's because of it was a Pandora's Box infinite run, right? So it's hard to evaluate how much a relic helps once you're already at an infinite state. But yeah, you can catch us on YouTube. You can also catch us on the uh, the Twitch VOD, Twitch VOD, Sleppy. Um, for those who are unaware, you can go to the videos page of any streamer on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Lord slash videos. And if you check out the recent broadcasts category, uh, then you can see all of the streams that have happened in the last 60 days, including the current one. So if you want to, you can rewind and watch this run uh, you know, right now without having to wait for it to move to a different platform. How would I rework Hand Drill to be decent but keep its identity? I would have Hand Drill do this. Every three turns, apply one vulnerable to all enemies. So kind of like Happy Flower meets Bag of Marbles. That, I think, would be pretty cool, and really actually kind of fits the theme of drilling into something, because you're gradually making it weaker. Having it conditional on block is a little bit awkward because already there is only a, a fairly small fraction of enemies that generate block in Slay the Spire. And then there also happens to be a large overlap between the ones that block and the ones that have artifacts. So most of the ones with block will stop the vulnerable anyway. It gets weird. It would be cool if there was a way to, like, a, a different relic that interacted with block somehow. You could have it be, like, your first hack each turn ignores enemy block or something. It would be an interesting relic. Anywho, we are switching games here. To against the storm. What if it applied Vuln to enemies that gain block? I think that'd be a bit better. That would make it easier to then break the block, sort of punish the enemies for blocking. I kind of like that one, Bear Smash. That, that would also then work ostensibly at the start of combat if an enemy started combat with block. There's a couple ways for that to happen, I think.
or enemies gain half as much block, I think would be a really cool relic. Yeah, I like that one. Whenever an enemy gains block, remove half of it. Welcome back, Twitch chat, to Against the Storm. One part settlement manager, one part roguelite. Devs re uh, just recently, I think just yesterday, put a new post-release roadmap uh, up on Steam, promising post-release improvements, including a trending resources window or tab or something that would let you easily see which resources you're quickly losing or quickly gaining, um, as well as promising DLC that would include another species, new buildings, new orders, and all that jazz. It's pretty cool. This game I already like quite a bit. To see more post-release support is exciting. Um, we've seen a number of games where they have a lengthy early access period with pretty regular updates, and then as soon as they release, they go pretty much silent. That was even Slay the Spire for the most part. Can I do a quick explain on how Queen's Hand is different? I can. So in Normal Against the Storm, you are sort of progressing a profile. You have a persistent unlock tree. Uh, and you accumulate resources that persist across multiple Blightstorm cycles. In Queen's Hand mode, it's sort of permadeath. You get one cycle on the overworld map uh, and nothing more. If you fail any single settlement, then the queen will behead you. So you die. Um, and you're also beheaded for failing to open an adamantine seal. So you have to, from a starting position of effectively no upgrades, you start with um, all the species unlocked and all of the buildings unlocked, but um, some of the advanced concepts... Uh, you also start with trade routes unlocked. Um, but you don't have the faction-specific housing. You don't have hearths beyond level 1. You don't have the ability to upgrade mines. And a myriad of other things. You have just the starting three embarkation points. No different embarkation bonuses to choose from. And from all of that, you have to make it to the hardest seal that there is, and break this on Prestige 20. All of the difficulties are unlocked at the start, however, it is straight up suicide to try to play on Prestige 20 from the get-go. How's it going, McLeod? Thanks for the Tier 2 sub in 20 mo 29 months. Migashu with 52 mo months. Insert witty reply here. Have I played any of the new Hitman trilogy? No. I think the only Hitman game I played was Blood Money, which was quite a while ago. Let's see, anything else that's different about Queen's Hand? So in the capital, we, we buy upgrades in a different way. We choose one of three upgrades up to 25 times with escalating uh, resource costs. And then there are four fundamental upgrades, two cornerstone pool increases, a blueprint pool increase, and the ability to reroll blueprints. Also not unlocked at the start, you have to buy it. Yeah, we started this, <clears throat> this attempt out with some cycle long resource bonuses which is really helping all of our settlements start with three essence 30 sea marrow 20 pipes and 30 oil which is actually pretty juicy our first settlement today we're going to be moving towards this uh seal here first settlement today is going to be in the marshlands where there are giant food nodes contained within the Forbidden Glades. 
I do like starting lizards on marshlands, especially lizards starting with this much food. Although this is only seven people. This one's nine, this one's nine. We should take nine over seven. We can take humans with also a lot of food. Or foxes with seven amber, 14 fabric. Kind of dig that, actually. Oh, and you know, three embarkation points is exactly enough to get the 21 pack of provisions, which I really like. Over the uh, eggs, roots, and wood. Uh, especially because our world map modifier is called Land of Greed. Impatience grows faster, but trade routes reduce the impatience generation speed by minus 20. Um, that does also make it a good caravan to bring humans on, because we can use humans to reduce impatience gain. So, foxes or humans? That's right, we get seven bricks to start, because we have a base of five, and I took plus 40% to starting resources. We have 28 parts and 34 pipes as well. How do I select the difficulty? There is a strategy behind it. Um, so the, the resources that you get from winning are dependent on the difficulty. If you play on Settler... We get basically nothing. So it would be an easy win, but it would also give us no rewards. And then as you jump up, the rewards get better. Um, but the biggest gains come from the, the early difficulties. So for me personally, I found the sweet spot to be Prestige 2. Um, partially because that means that the storm will last two minutes longer. And what really matters is how many in-game years it takes to get a win. Longer storms mean less in-game years, because you get more time per year. And there's not that big a difference between P2 and P20 in terms of rewards. We get 70, 21, 5 versus 20 is uh, 112, 32, 9. So it's actually about twice as much, but P20 is a lot more than twice as hard than uh, compared to P2. Um, basically, uh, the idea is that you can do a larger number of settlements on a lower difficulty in order to get more total resource. So that's what we're, we're sort of min-maxing here is rewards per in-game year required to win. And P2 feels like a good sweet spot for me. That means we can get wins on year 5 or year 6. I don't ever name my settlements here. This will be Baylor... I'm feeling foxes. Let's embark. Oh, and we got lizards too. Good. That means we want to make skewers. So, patience grows faster. Which will lower hostility. Our positive forest mystery, gain one free cornerstone reroll for every reputation point we gain during Drizzle. That's kind of a cool one. We don't have cornerstone rerolls yet. Our negative modifiers, less sacrifice stacks is whatever. This one says have a house, whatever. Unnatural erosion, pay oil with each storm or lose resource nodes. That's kind of nasty. Got to be aware of hostility for then. Higher chance of using goods when using services. Okay, these aren't too bad negative modifiers. Some of the negative storm modifiers are much nastier than others. So some require more attention. Start of a new settlement. I'm pretty much always looking to lay some initial camps, get my starting paths, my roads down, to sort of lay out the settlement in a grid. And I want, start, I want to start cutting towards Dangerous Glade. I'm also going to make a trading post early since we have pack of provisions here. 
Let's prioritize these, though. Thank you. We'll use the lizard as the hearth keeper. That way he'll be nice and happy. In fact, we can favor him and start gaining a teensy bit of reputation immediately. It's the blue resource goes down here. We need points to win, essentially. With a happy lizard, we get... Wait, we get nothing. He needs a house. Someone get that lizard a house immediately. I want to build the trading post next. All right, we'll speed up the initial thing. Here in our starting glade, we've got some meat and eggs, which is all well and good. Angry Walrus, thanks for the eight months of support. So once per year, we get to choose a cornerstone, basically a passive perk that will help us out here. Silent looting is one of my favorites, lowering hostility with each cache we open. But I really like Hidden Reward here. That'll give us Ancient Tablets automatically. Ancient Tablets are a very valuable trade good. They're worth 8 amber apiece. And sometimes you can sell them in trade routes, which is what I want. Because usually the trade routes for them last a very long time, which is going to be good impatience reduction on the Land of Greed. We're gaining impatience at 0.37 per minute, so it's going to fill up the red bar very fast. We do have to be aware of that. All right, let's take a look at the trade routes here. Through the trading post, we can do trade routes where we sell goods plus some number of pack of provisions in exchange for duff. And every trade route we have active will reduce the impatience gain for a little while. So it's worth selling some stuff. I'll sell uh, I'll sell this coal for two. I think that's a totally reasonable trade to make, just to get a little bit of impatience reduction. Now we're getting 0.32 per minute, still higher than base. I think we need two or three trade routes active to be slower than base gain. Kind of spooky, actually. But as mentioned, there are benefits to uh, high impatience as well. Okay, so currently we have no wood. Into the woodcutter then. So uh, the benefit of Impatience is that each level of Impatience reduces the hostility of the forest by 15 points. Um, that means the nastier modifiers of the storm won't be active nearly as often. Uh, and it means our villagers will have overall higher resolve. A little bit. We have to make up for it by earning reputation, the, the blue, quickly. Or else. With each new season comes new trade routes. Oof, that's a bad deal. Heck no. I could consider making advanced stuff here to try to trade route it, but I don't think so. I think we'll just deal with a relatively low number of tradable things for a bit. Bad deals can also help you increase your standing level. That's right. Every uh, starting the first 10 amber, and then it's like 20, 30, something like that for each additional level. Basically, the more total amber you trade, the higher level your trade routes with that particular settlement, um, the better a payout you'll get. Hmm. Okay, please make food. Each year in Against the Storm has three seasons. First, Drizzle, where you can plant crops, then Clearance, where you can harvest crops, and lastly, the Storm, where everyone huddles down and 
loses resolve, as well as additional penalties applying. Gotta make sure you're preparing for your storm each year. Putting things in place to keep your villagers happy enough that they won't dip into the negative during the storm. Yeah, that one lizard is having a good time. Really love being the Hearth Keeper. Make it point. Oh, yeah, make it a little bit of reputation. Just a little bit. They're doing their best, okay? They're trying. We just unfavor the lizards and uh, the fox will. The lizard, rather. I love that we're just giving that one lizard preferential treatment over all the foxes. I must have been pissed about that. So, around the halfway point of the first storm, that's when I like to look at my orders. Then I break into a glade. Then I look at my blueprints. From there. No harm in looking at the first blueprint earlier. I think that's true, actually. In case you got uh, lumber mill. If for, for, and for example, sometimes you get something you do want to build immediately. Like, we could have built this right away and started making planks early, but that's okay. He'll want to break into the first glade, find out if we want the trapper's camp before I select lumber mill. But that's pretty good. Use lumber mill here. All right, let's mark this for destruction. Uh, and take our first orders here. Order is basically like little quests. If you complete them, you get reputation points, as well as additional rewards. Three glade events. How about three rain engines? That sounds very easy, given that we have an enormous amount of parts. It's trivial to install three rain engines. Uh, pipes, rather, not parts. We'll get oil and copper bars and some more people for the... Settlement, which is quite nice to get early. One Ancient Tablet, we are guaranteed to get that because we have our perk. So this will be a free 60 food and a free 2 Wildfire Essence. Easy. And then Blue Metal, deliver 5 Crystallized Dew. I think we did have Forester's Hut as a blueprint option. Give us a bonus of resin production. Or discover three glades and rebuild a ruin. This one's very easy to do early on. I like Lost in the Woods. Okay. And there's our newcomers, too. Harpies of the third species. Hmm. Interesting. I don't feel like I particularly want harpies yet. Let's take some lizards with some food. Hmm, what do you mean lizard resolve is low? Don't be ridiculous. Make yourselves a lizard house. Um, here. Workshops are pretty cool early find in the first glade here. For a simple investment of planks, bricks, and fabric, we can get a permanent production facility for everything. We've got, yes, large meat nodes, so I'll probably take that trapper's camp. I actually didn't realize the large leech broodmothers give more leather than they do meat. And a large uh, nest, too, so there's a large egg. So we have a permanent supply, well, maybe not permanent, a long-term supply of meat and eggs here. Definitely a good reason to take the trapper's camp. Brickyard can make bricks nice and easy. Temple's the one for sacrificing, right? Hmm. 
Having a service building early is nice. I'm not a big fan of Temple, but it might do something for us. What's in here? Upper bars. Oh, heck yeah. Oh, this is my favorite. With five ancient tablets, too? Holy crap. What an amazing Glade event. These rewards are insane. Awesome. We will get a spike in hostility next year, but that's nothing we can't manage. Yeah, that's actually insane rewards. Um, we're going to get three permanent global resolve and five ancient tablets. Um, and in fact, we want to start work on this momentarily. In fact, I think we want to start work on this right now. Takes five minutes. Four minutes with two people, I believe. So I don't think the trader will still be here, but that's okay. Although, two foxes. Hold on. How fast is two foxes here? Three minutes, 32 seconds. Still think that's not quite fast enough, but it's a good attempt. Uh, yeah. Send them to investigate that now. Yeah, every 60 seconds. Okay. Start, start on that right away. Main lure of the brick yard is the bricks, and we've already got brick production with the workshop, so I think I'm going to take temple here. We definitely don't pick on, uh, definitely don't pick workshop here, but I am down for flour, which can make advanced uh, food a bit better. Alternately, Manufactory gets two-star pack of provisions, which means long-term trade route security, which I do quite like. I believe this is the best... Yeah, this is the best place for pack of provisions making. Let's do Manufactory here. I have nothing to turn that flower into yet. Hmm. Okay, so this feels like a pretty promising start, actually. Um, upgrading the Trapper's Camp even means we get food faster from the main glade. Is that a Stormwater Geyser? Oh, heck yeah. Even better. I, I missed the part where, you, where we have a Stormwater Geyser here, which will fuel a lot of our um, buildings that we just picked. Cool. Okay, so we're ready to unpause? Question mark. We have three lizards unassigned. Lizards should be working here. And yeah, we want to build that house. Okay. We also need the makeshift a crude workstation so that I can make enough planks to rebuild the workshop. And let's start woodcutting close to home here. Let's get moved now. more unassigned workers. One more woodcutter. Um, and let's start building a path over here. Right through that geyser, I guess. Why not? How's it going, Dragon? Thanks for the prime sub and the nine months. My favorite non-deck builder, roguelike, or a roguelite? Probably FTL faster than light. Would be my nomination. Or Hades. I really enjoyed Hades, too. Okay, so many things happen when the storm ends. New orders appear, which I won't open for a while. New cornerstone appears. New trade routes appear. And the trader arrives. So it's a lot of things happening at the same time. Hmm. Kind of interested in, interested in trade routes that take a long time. Leather. We might be able to get enough leather to make this trade route happen by the end of the season. Okay. If we pay attention. Da, da, da. 
Uh, do you have planks? No, you've got bricks and fabric, but no planks, huh? Bummer. Definitely a bummer. Do I want anything? Probably some bricks, I guess. We have nine amber. Might as well make a trade here. oil or anything, right? I don't think so. Uh, yeah, Acappy, uh, all the traders got uh, new portraits, except uh, Zorg, because Zorg was already perfect. Our beautiful, beautiful boy. Rebellious Spirit. That's the that's the winner. Anytime you're on a hard map modifier, Rebellious Spirit is amazing. Gain one global resolve for every two impatience points. Well, guess what? I'm gaining global resolve at a alarming rate. Or uh, rather, I'm gaining impatience at an alarming rate. So I'll gain global resolve at an alarming rate, which is a good thing. Give me that. Excellent, excellent perk. Arguably the best. Feels a little OP sometimes but in a good way. Alright, you salvage this, or rebuild it or whatever. And let's queue up a warehouse over here as well. We need more planks for the hearth. But that's a medium term goal. Let's get another hearth online. <laughs> yeah, love rebellious spirit. Too good. All right, let's start gaining some rep here. Um, we'll cut our way towards this glade. That's probably the next one I'll open. Yeah, Re Rebellious Spirit is, is partially good because you are allowed to gain impatience if you want it, basically at any time. You can just summon traitors. Um, and there's a few other ways to do it. You can let people die. Mm. So gaining impatience if you want it is not hard. Just missing a builder for the other thing I see. Keep an eye on the leather. We need 16? Yeah, 16 for the trade route. It should show a 3 or something if, if we get it. Um, we successfully completed the Hidden Trader Cemetery, so now we get the uh, Ancient Artifact perk, plus 3 Global Resolve. is another huge boon to us here. Okay, that's going now, so you're fired. In fact, we can delete the crude workstation entirely. Playing on Prestige 2 for this game of our Queen's Hand playthrough. Okay, we missed the trade route. That's okay. Oops. <clears throat> Might want to consider a... Um, what was I going to say? Not sure what I'm considering. What do foxes do? They give you faster event speed working. So they'll they'll complete glade events more quickly, and they like buildings that interact with water. So they get a bonus to happiness when working water pumps and a couple other situations.
Okay, hook up the workshop. It's gonna be the first thing we stormwater geyser. Oh, that's right, um, consider getting the hearth online. That's what I was trying to say. That also takes stuff I don't have right now. Okay, we do want a builder, so we're good. And yes, we should make a house over here. I'm gonna put a hearth down as soon as the cemetery is gone. Since we can't upgrade the main hearth beyond level one, uh, we want to expand into new lands for new hearths, which will give us hostility reduction as well as global resolve once we decor the place. Could we not pick this? Tea Doctor's cool, a reward for eating complex food. Speaking of complex food, actually, we have a field kitchen unlock now, don't we? Pretty sure that we do. Wait. Maybe I should cut into the next glade before I pick this. Let's see, field kitchen. It makes jerky, porridge, biscuits, and pickles, but not skewers. Okay. Not skewers, got it. Please prioritize the planks, thanks. Just kind of took forever, but uh, that's fine. Can you get a two sentence brief of what you're watching right now? This is part settlement manager, part roguelite. So we're, we're managing a settlement uh, with three, uh, there will eventually be three rather, different species of villager. Each villager has different likes and dislikes, uh, different needs that they want fulfilled in order to make them happy which is the number below their face, their happiness level. If they're blue, that means they're earning points for us. The goal here is to fill up the blue meter by earning points. We lose if the red meter fills up completely, and it fills up over time. That's sort of the gist of it all. So I can sell two copper bars for two, or I can sell two copper bars for three. Well, heck, I guess that's not a very hard choice. Sell all these copper bars I just got for 15 amber. Please and thank you. I guess I could sell these ones too, but that seems ridiculous. I'll sell a little bit more coal too. It's a good deal on coal. Let's do times two on this one. It gives us a lot of amber for the next trader that will arrive soon. Can you ever lose blue bar points? I don't believe so. That sure sounds like it's not a thing. Um, we want our stonecutter's camp, is what we want. You. Right there. And we want to move the trapper's camp pretty soon. Okay. Oh yeah, we want that hearth. Along with some shelters. Actually, make it some weird day core, like crates back here. Um, hopefully taking more unhoused people won't be too bad. Try to further balance out the fox versus lizard number. Although, actually, since we have lizard houses, maybe we should go more foxes. And then we can just keep a small number of lizards happy with special houses. Let's try that. You're on stone cutting duty. Need more woodcutters. These paths need to extend. And it's time to look at the next set of orders now ish. Burn 12 blight rot cysts. 
surprisingly hard to do on this difficulty. So let's go with no. Deliver 20 pack of crops. Pretty tough, actually, but more accomplishable than 12 light rot cysts. Eat jerky 50 times. That we can definitely do. Or discover three forbidden glades. This one gives tools, which is quite nice. Although I like that um, we get plus egg production from this one. Let's take plus egg production. And let's get the field kitchen online and start making jerky. To fulfill that. That way we can get double value out of this large snake nest. We can do the, the leeches first and make jerky out of the meat. And the lizards will even enjoy it. However, that's going to cost a lot of fuel. Uh, making jerky at the field kitchen is not exactly efficient. Just to be clear. Actually, no, wait. That's where that was supposed to be. Back here. Open this. Least favorite species? Not harpies. Maybe beavers, actually. Haunted temple? That's hilarious. So wait, we make a superpower temple, right? What is the holy temple? What is this? Two hundred seconds. Oh, every two villagers with the need for education fulfilled decreases forest hostility by minus 10. Fascinating. I've never seen this building. Cool. Large wheat nodes. Oh, better yet, large stone nodes. I like large stone nodes. This can gather from these large wheat nodes, and there's no fertile ground, so I think I take the foragers camp here. Tavern is almost always a take from me. That said, what about three star scroll production? I would need pigment, which we can do via the manufactory. Oh snap. Hold on. But only the harpies actually like being educated. So what does the manufactory require? Pigment is made of coal or copper ore, berries or insects. Hmm. Yep, some of those. Yeah, we currently have no harpies, but that, that can change. I don't know, it seems like a bit of a stretch. Tavern is just really easy, plus three global resolve. Probably just take tavern. Big tavern. Easy peasy, plus three easy. This is just free stuff. Or if I make some purging fire, I can actually get points from this. To make a bunch of purging fire. I don't exactly have a lot of fuel. So let's not. We've seen harpies in a uh, a group of newcomers, so we, we know that harpies are locked in as the third species. Once you've seen them, um, they won't change. Not that. That. Okay. Okay, connect this. Crank that up. Use that for happiness sometimes, too. Manufactory also uses stormwater. That's cool. I like that quite a lot, actually. Ooh, 
Ooh, plus two to stone production. We just revealed two large stone nodes. This would effectively triple the stone yield from it, which is kind of nuts. We could get more people more quickly with Crowded Caravan. I don't really like the other options. I say we take steel pickaxes. More stone. Stone with which to complete trade routes and such. We can make pack of crops out of uh, grain, can't we? I'm pretty sure we can. Oh good, the trapper's camp is out. We didn't even gather from the small egg nodes yet, even better. Let's just get the large meat. And again, we'll get bonus eggs after doing the need for jerky a bunch of times. Zorg, if you have planks, that would save me a lot of, yeah, a lot of trouble. I actually have nine planks currently, allegedly. We also have five ancient tablets with which to trade. Oh, actually, if I want to fulfill the need for jerky 50 times, why don't we just buy 40 of it? That'll make it a lot easier. And I'll take all of those planks, quite frankly. We're doing okay on fabric. We're doing okay on fabric. Nate Diggadoggity says, watch some other streamers do Prestige 20 Queen's Hand the whole way through. That is impressive. I actually didn't even think it was possible. Sounds very hard. Certainly it can't be the easiest way to do Queen's Hand mode. There's no way. Could get board bonus porridge production for our uh, foxes here. Ooh. Harpies don't actually like porridge, but the foxes would. I don't think that's necessarily worth uh, 15 amber here. Could be, but I doubt it. Okay, we need a lizard. You live here now. Managing the earth. We need four more people to live there. Eventually. More oil for cleansing. We do have oil. I could cleanse this right now. If I got some oil. That sounds like a really convenient thing. Let's do that. How much for all of the oil? 1250? You got it. <laughs> cool. Okay, that's definitely a job for three foxes, though. Um, we should build the warehouse first. Good talk, Zorg. only takes two minutes and 20 seconds. So we should be able to cleanse that. Normally that's actually a problem, but not today. Thanks to the shorter clean event time. Of course they all immediately go for a break, right? What do we need for the cauldron? Oh yeah, I'm supposed to deal with this. We just need to tear it down with someone, that's all. We just need to actually do it. You guys are stopped. Good sign. A very good sign. Okay, 
they bring the wrong species? Oh yeah, because we're getting the penalties now. That's right. Impatience continues to rise, but again, the more the impatience rises, the higher our resolve rises too, thanks to the rebellious spirit perk. Although it is still a bit scary, I'm gonna be honest. Not actually gonna use any water there, I just we need to connect him. Cool, we have a holy temple. And we have some blight rot cysts. We might actually need a blight post. Let's make that just in case. Uh blight post. Here. Right next to the hearth. Get manufactories up. we always have at least 20 pack provisions I suppose we make sense here Hello. The kitchen Hello. let's make jerky use the sea for this Yeah, we might actually need that, um... So, we want to take harpies? I guess so. Let's get our first harpy. is looking good. That's a good deal on food. And we want to deliver, start your engines. That would give us two more people at this moment. Not quite yet. I think I need another house for that. Worth building a harpy house? Alas, I'm not allowed to do that. Don't have those unlocked. Wow, we have like not much fuel here. But the miners are going to get fuel. I'm going to get coal. We're also just not running that many woodcutters at this exact moment. You already make... Sure did. Somehow we already have 98 stone. I don't even want to know. We also have a ton of leather. Sell t all of this leather. And all of this stone as well. We probably should disallow copper ore until we have lots of coal, but I'm not going to because I am lazy. That's the only reason. We should cut into this glade this year. We have to cut it into new glades periodically. Uh, we want to start thinking about being able to open caches soonish too. Oh yeah, we're actually out of wood now. That's a problem. Yeah, you 
You can also burn coal if you want to. In fact, please prioritize burning coal for now. Please, please, please do that. It's also time to look at the next set of orders here. Archaeology. Four glades, three ancient tablets. Easy. Or sell 70 amber worth of goods in five minutes. To get five biscuits per minute? Hold on. So the cool thing is that these both count. So we actually have 30 amber locked in already. And I have a lot of ancient tablets to trade. I think we can do a uh, wealthy trader here. I think we can quite easily do this. It'll give us a blueprint unlock. Lots of advanced food, too. Although 12 tools is also very good, actually. But let's get five biscuits per minute. That sounds awesome. This requires kiln unlock. 175 clearance water is not going to happen, so I'll just keep an eye out for kiln. Okay, this feels pretty good. We get... Oh, we could take Woodcutter's Prayer to fix the fuel situation. We'll lose all of our stored fuel, including the oil that we bought and the sea marrow. But plus one to wood production will help uh, solve that pretty quick. None of the rest even feel that good. So I think I might take Woodcutter's Prayer here. And then we don't have to run out of wood again. Let's do it. Low on fuel, you don't say. Wonder how that happens. Okay, make sure we run triple or max woodcutters for now. Uh, ideally near warehouses. In fact, do this right here, please. You still need to cut into that. Um, now we can also deliver this, get two more people. are better. I'm not sure how I got 30 oil suddenly. Or maybe it didn't get deleted. I'm grateful. It's this. Plan Hall is pretty cool. That's right. Camps produce a greater yield. And I can make this thing right away. Oh yeah, let's take Clan Hall. Clan Hall is nuts here. Clan Hall actually insane. Yeah, we're making bricks right now. Good. Uh, I need... Less miners, then, I guess. Forsaken Crypt. Tinctuary is kind of cool. More large wheat. 20 planks in here. This might be worth breaking into, actually. Pottery is good, too. Crypt has even more ancient tablets. Where we can spend money to calm the spirits. Although I need to spend this money on a trader. Also, I can't really calm them. So... Except, this gives a penalty based on Amber, which is really awkward right now. Also, I don't have the materials required. Uh, I'm awkward. 
be more stone production. Even more plus stone. Flour can be made out of wheat. We have lots of grain. Flyer's not a bad idea, then, to get baked goods online. Containers, we have a little bit of, and we can get some more. Foxes and lizards like pickled goods, and pickled goods are plus eight. I'll take the granary here. I will take the granary here. Okay, uh, that's pretty good. Everything we just found in there is good. And then we want trade routes to help fulfill the value of goods sold requirement here. We want trade routes that resolve within about three minutes. So we can do eight. It's a bad deal. Oh well. Love, 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 Golden Hoof. And Sother arrives. We must trade with Sother about 40 amber worth of stuff. I would not mind buying water skins and or, uh, not coats, only harpies like coats here. Water skins to make pickled goods out of the granary sound good, so I'll buy those. That's a clean 20, how convenient. Here, you can have two of these. Some of that. Um, what else would I like? I guess I'll take the coats. Because I need more stuff. 26, that's enough, right? Now we're at 36 out of 70. 56 out of 70. No, we're not good. We need about 10 more. Feathered walnut. Delicious. That's right, we have clan hall. Oh. Interesting. Brawling is pretty sweet. Okay, give me 10 amber worth of training gear. Thanks. Okay, so that should fulfill the wealthy trader requirement. Right. Plus 28, 66, yeah, 74. Incense for the temple? Not a terrible idea. Actually, uh, only lizards are religious. Interesting. Say that's a bad thing or anything, but interesting. Okay, the clan hall's coming up. We'll staff the clan hall. Much immediately here, because three lizards working in the clan hall will give us super bonus yields from all camps except woodcutters camps, which is very absurd. Good kind of absurd, to be clear. Um, although it does mean that we need less people working on other things for a minute. We also still have to deal with this Forsaken Crypt. Except I'm worried about the teardown effect here. I should have chosen to calm the spirits. Hmm. I'll take all of my amber. How rude. Yes, we are at a dilemma here. This will work best by summoning a traitor, right? So 
Still have one more season. Yeah, so we're going to summon a traitor. It'll cost us half a point of impatience. But then I can actually deal with the Forsaken Crypt. Which would be a real problem otherwise. Did I want to open any of these? The one with 20 planks is pretty tempting. Do that one. Let's get containers. Is this game as hard to learn as it looks? It's really not that bad. There's a lot of uh, details going on in any given game of Against the Storm, but it all kind of averages out, so to speak. All right, give me more harpies, I guess. Sure. Sweet. With 11 seconds to spare, we activate five biscuits per minute. The ultimate in biscuit technology. It's something. Oh yeah, and I'm supposed to... Wait, I wasn't supposed to do that. No! That's fine. Some of the trader now? Yeah, some of the trader now. Spend my money with them. And then do the Forsaken Crypt. Now-ish. Hold on, what's going on here? Uh, workshop. Here, you're making planks. That's right, because I made those priority one. You need help. Bricks. Okay, good luck, everybody. Oh, that's right. We can set the trade to not auto-accept. Keep the reminder on that. Always forget about that option. Ah, uh, you've got tools. Perfect. Also, you got bricks. Give me f ten more bricks. And then as many tools as I can get for this. Twelve? That's sad. Thanks. I guess. Cool. Okay, spending all our money takes away our penalty for now. Only the plus biscuit production perk worked with the biscuits per minute perk. But alas. Hopefully we can get a year five win with this game. It sounds a little difficult, but it might be doable here. and planks can make training gear, huh? Hmm. Interesting. Fuel is trending upwards for once. Good. Storm begins. Let's fulfill the need for jerky. Skewers and biscuits. Now we're talking. Did I take the thing that makes flour? No, I didn't. Here's the thing that makes flour. Okay, so we get flour and a way to make biscuits. Although skewers are actually the more important thing to be making. Because we have two species that adore skewers and they're pretty easy to make. Especially with the ingredients we have. So our goal for this next year is going to be getting more of our advanced foods online. We could do a big resolve push or something. Also pick new orders now-ish. Then trade routes. 
I can do that. I sure can. soon. The cash is being done. The crypt is being done. This is good. The Pope, thanks for the prime sub and the two months of Pope Port. People support. Thanks for the good stuff. Okay, yeah, less workshop workers. Start working at the granary. Not sure food is through the roof right now. Where are these eggs even coming from? Oh, because they're a secondary? Oh, that's right, there's 20, oh my god. <laughs> so there's 20% egg chance on the, the leech brood mother, and that has resulted in 131 eggs somehow. We haven't even worked any of the egg nodes yet. We also got eggs, I think, as a reward from one of our quests. Hey there, Laszlo Kovacs. Any advice for the Prestige 5 seal? Definitely drop everything to work on the, the seal quests. Follow the little guidance stones to find the, the forest node. You can actually de delete the Guidance Stones if you want to. Is there someone in the field kitchen still? Yeah, there is. You have nothing to do, though, because you're out of sea marrow. Fair enough. Yeah, use eggs. Eggs and meat for skewers, thanks. Use up the jerky, that's fine. Grain bags is actually kind of insane with how much grain we have. How about even faster woodcutters, though? Alternately, we now have two rerolls. Reroll. I like woodcutter's song. Even more steel pickaxes is kind of insane, too, if we want to make a truly ludicrous amount of... Stuff. Actually, trade logs is nice, too. Faster traders, more trade route slot. Let's take that. Because I do have to complete a lot of trade routes. Just do trade routes quick, like. Don't worry too much about them. Oh, yeah, we're also making packer provisions out of the wrong thing now. Please use the eggs, not the meats. Thank you. Catch. Faster traders, not faster trade routes, just to be clear. Should we want way more planks, right? Yeah, so let's limit to the 50. Doing okay on wood. Alright. We... Need more granary workers. Yeah, this all feels pretty good. Let's even favor the foxes to get all three species generating positive resolve. Let's look at our final order here. 20 lizards. Currently I have six. Or deliver 50 oil and 50 coats. That's much more reasonable. All we need is a trader who has both of those things, and we can do that easy peasy. Alternately, we can look in some of the caches. Oh yeah, speaking of caches, we have enough to open a cache, so let's do that. That's points. This feels pretty good. Hmm. 
Do leisure and education at the forum. The cooperage, we can make coats. I don't really care to make coats. I'll take tea doctor, I guess. I'm not going to build the tea doctor, but I'll take it. Got lots of service buildings I'm not going to make. I will make the ring mill, though. Point six seven rep per minute. We'll have two seasons left this year. Seems unlikely that we can... accomplish what we're trying to do here, but we can try. Um, we should gain some more impatience, I guess. When's our next naturally arriving trader coming? Trading post is over here. 1 minute 38 seconds. Okay, so I'll probably call a second trader after the first one leaves. We've got lots of lots of stuff to trade with here. Um, pack of crops are made of the greenery. Let me prioritize those for a minute, hey? Yeah, just prioritize that. Although the rep rush is also helping. I maybe want another greenery. Genuinely. More trade routes. Parts can certainly be sold. Uh, oil is kind of a thing with pack of crops here. Oh well. Trade routes is trade routes. Another point. Scribe back. Okay. We can educate people at the temple. No oil, though. I'll take your coats. I'll take your scrolls. I'll take your training gear. I'll take your incense. All of our advanced service need stuff. And all of that is paid for in exact full by six ancient tablets. That's kind of cool. Oh, yeah, we can also buy more tools. We should do that as well. 11 more, specifically. Okay. We need some pure woodcutters, then. That was a cash. Right here. It's another 0.75. I think we can do this. Could this be our year five? If we're a little bit lucky, yes. I think we're going to need some luck on the trade routes. And some luck with oil from a trader. I am going to sell that nine oil. Oh yeah, we're supposed to allow doing stuff at places as well. Clan hall. Brawling in religion, yes. Holy temple. Education, yes. Zorg. Yes. And maybe even call another trader after Zorg for the two impatience for the one global resolve. Hola, indeed. Yeah, these are whatever. Hello. You don't have oil. Hmm. 
I think we can get one more trader. It'll be a very brief window. Oh, no, wait, he leaves in one minute, 19 seconds. I thought he left after one minute exactly. No, that won't be enough time. Okay, so we're stuck with this. Give me your jerky, your pickles, and your porridge, then. Everyone can eat those for fun. We could also maybe try to buy tools. Cut into a glade. That's another good idea. How much for 15 tools? Probably more than I can afford now that I gave you everything. Well, actually... Cool. Okay, so we want to cut into Dangerous Glade. You, come here. Hey, I said come here. Also, I see another trade routes available. What is this? Porridge. Sell the porridge. Alright, good luck everyone. Time is of the essence here. Oh, pack of crops are basically done. We're gonna have way too many pack of crops. Yeah, actually. Wait. No, stop. Stop making pack of crops. Just stop. Done too much. Wait, Zorg, you want to buy nine pack of crops? Wait, he left. No, he didn't. Um, give me. I guess it doesn't matter. Give me wine. Didn't know you could have a small circle. Yeah, hold. Shift for a smaller marker. Hold control to exclude trees that are on glades. So you can press control and then mark everything that isn't adjacent to a glade. And then hold alt to undo. Or press the, the minus button. There's some nice hotkeys there. And yes, we did get medium abandoned caches. Perfect. Good. Can we do escape convicts? If we can arrest them in time. Yeah, we can. We have enough training gear. Takes five minutes, but not... That seems really unlikely that they'll actually do it in time, so I don't think I'm going to bother. Okay, don't bother about that. Yes, yeah, so we need two more trade routes. can do that. Sell this, sell this. Actually, I only needed one more, technically. Um, so we get one order, yeah, and one cash. We're there, we're there. We got it. We have a year five win. We don't have any sea marrow to burn, but uh, thankfully we made it anyway. So, send all the wood cutters. You'd love to see it. Deliver. And as soon as these two chumps are finished, we win. We almost got there without their help. In fact, we could favor the harpies to still earn 0.04 per minute the power. GG. A very swift year five win. Russ. We got over here. Gathering Storm. Every year the storm lasts longer. That's kind of cool. I don't think I've played with that modifier yet. That said, we want to get towards the Adventine Seal here. So I think think we're actually going to take the extended range here, Caravan Wagons, for two more Vision and Embrocation range. That should reveal this event and let us see whatever this is, too. Ideally settling next to it. Is 
So let's do that. Amend a contract. Hog? Oh yeah. Win a game before year eight ends after completing trade routes worth at least 150 amber. If we succeed, all of our remaining caravans will start with 10 amber and three parts. Sounds good to me. That's exactly what I want is more permanent uh, goods for the rest of this cycle. Also able to buy some upgrades now that we have more machinery. We could take the fourth, the blueprint pick. Very tempting. Although that'll deny me the ability to go further into these upgrades for a while. Let's get harpy houses. Discount from traders is nice. Faster trader arrival. Race period. Oh, lizard starting ability for 10 tools. I love that one. Donating clay. Question of do I want... What, what do I want for the passive here? Plus one to charges, less fuel consumption, or 1% chance of double yields. I think the double yield chance. Another 10% discount. Give me that. Okay, and that's all the machinery. Again, machinery seems to be the limiting factor here. How's it going, Vita Emerald? You can ask uh, qu Spire questions. Which curses can be obtained from Niao's blessing? Every curse except Ascender's Bane, Curse of the Bell, and Necronomic Curse. So this should be like 11? You don't remember how many there are. But essentially all of the non-special curses. Uh, although if you're playing on mobile version, oh yeah, you can't get pride. Uh, if you're playing the mobile version or the iOS version, you might be able to get Curse of the Bell due to a bug. I will win with trade routes. Wow, beavers and lizards starting with pie and biscuits. Not bring the pack of provisions starting bonus, alas. That would have been very convenient for this challenge. Oh well. 14 bricks is also kind of high. But I like the, the highest number of people plus all the food here. We get a, way over 100 food to start. I love it. Give me some eggs. Let's just jump right into it. So we have to sell 150 amber worth of goods via trade routes. That sounds like a lot. But I think in practice it shouldn't be too hard. More planting speed during drizzle. Hold snap. You'll eat more food if you're not eating complex food. Interesting. Good reason to get complex food up early. So we have beavers, lizards, foxes, pickles, pickle clan. Lots of pickles. We want the pickles. No break. No break. Didn't feel like a break right at that moment. I might take a mid-run break. That would be reasonable. Or I might just do this fast. We'll see. Dangerous Glades? Hello? Oh, there's one. Okay. We 
always build the houses far away from the warehouse. We have 10 tools now, right? Yeah. Sweet. Thank you, lizards. Please make these first. Thank you. And you can make this and this. Crazy having 10 people to start. Ooh. Wait, trade negotiations seems even better though, right? Trade routes are worth more amber, so it's easier to complete the commenda contracts. That said, friendly relations rewarding us with global resolve for completing trade routes, also kind of cool. But yeah, trade negotiations surely is the best choice here to directly affect our goal. Oh yeah, I should also disable the juicy stuff. No eating fancy pie or biscuits for you. Basic food only, which we started with an enormous quantity of. There's eggs in the trees too. It's fine, actually. Nothing I can do, right? I can almost make this trade route. I gotta say, now that I know Queen's Hand P20 only has been done, I have to go look up how it's, what that looks like. I'm deeply curious. How much shenanigans do you have to get up to to pull it off? Do I usually build the trading post so quickly? Um, if I have pack of provisions as a starting bonus, then yes, I'll build it this fast. Uh, otherwise, no, not not usually. I am trying to get a head start on the uh, commenda contracts. Looks like we didn't roll anything we can fulfill though. Wait, pie? Oh, I haven't done the things yet. Oh, I see. Yeah, we'll sell that pie, definitely. Lots of micromanagement in all P20, I, I bet. Let's go knit line. We played a little bit of Monster Train yesterday, actually. Yeah, let's just sell all the pie for 12 amber. Shut those trees. And yeah, the, surely the first game would be the hardest if you're doing all P20. If someone trying all P20, no upgrade? That sounds like madness. 
sheer madness. We can sell the biscuits as well, although they're not worth as much. We can sell some of our parts. That's a good deal. We have enough pack of provisions for one part to be sold. Let's get some more pack of provisions then. Uh, we're missing a house. Is that correct? Yes. I actually did need four from the very beginning. And we're going to need another one shortly, so let's queue one up. Do four for twenty. Sounds good. We are burning through our food pretty quickly here, but it's okay. There's always more food. of decay can be converted to reduce hostility I think I'd rather just tear it down we'll spike our hostility dramatically that's okay doesn't take long to tear down get some sea marrow and some I not a whole lot of rewards but something got large berry nodes we have fertile ground we got a brickyard let's see berry nodes. Oh, and large mushroom nodes in here, too. So, forager's camp? Herbalist camp, rather? No, this is... Oh. No, we, we really need the herbalist camp specifically. Okay. Um, probably herb garden, then? Unless we're taking supplier. Which is a good early, good early pick, especially with mushrooms locked in to make flour out of. Water skins are also very good. I like Supplier quite a lot. But is it as good as Lumber Mill? It's also Brickyard to make pottery. Pottery's good on this map type as well. Hmm. I think Brickyard. Stamping mills, even better pottery and flour? That's a shame. So it's either tincturary or cellar. Cellar makes pickles. And the humans like working there. It's not good pickled goods, but it's pickled goods. Don't I already have a brickyard? What? Oh, yeah. Whoops. We'll salvage it. It's fine. Yeah, I forgot that was there. Good call. Not in love with those unlocks, but uh, that's fine. Wow, those are nice. You know what? I'll take the one fewer person just for those starting planks to get the supplier online. Makes my life a lot easier. Um, we almost have enough tools for the cash. I was definitely supposed to open orders before I came in here. It's all right. Keep the lizards happy to get five meat per minute. Done. No questions. Five blight rot cysts at the same time. Also done. Crystallized dew can be made at the brickyard. Rich Harvest is not bad here. 
fuel. Okay, so I'm gonna wait for the trader to arrive. Make the seller. Was that plus 100 reward? That was um, hearth corruption resistance. Means the hearth is more resilient to blight rot cysts. Not a very good perk, unfortunately. Make water skins here. Or pottery here, okay. So we have ways to make containers. We need a stone cutter can. No geyser here. Okay, so we need to get the lizards to eighteen happiness. In five minutes. That is easier said than done. We do have planks and bricks and fabric. How much stuff can I trade here? That's reasonable. I'm even willing to trade some wood for this. Well, there's a couple of parts. Okay. Oh, I should have traded uh, Wildfire Essence. We have more than I need of that. That's fine. I should have done this first, yeah. Protected trade is very good. Our hostility goes down every time we sell goods worth 30 amber, which the contract requires that we do a ton of. Sell even more food, because I'm a fool. Do we have enough of these yet? Not yet. Okay, now we have the basic stuff for building things. Get the supplier online. Here, we need to cut some trees down. Yeah, I need to deal with this now. Even more reason to trade away the wildfire essence, actually. Five minutes. Takes about five minutes. Hmm. Spooky. Yeah, we can make lizard houses to help with the lizard situation. Make two of those. This is 16. We realistically need to get some pickles. Or jerky. Wait, we can make jerky, right? That's not hard. Yes, it is. Dang it. Okay, it has to be pickles. Which means we need to make containers. 
takes a long time to make containers. Hmm. This might be a little awkward. Wait, if we salvage it, we get some immediately, right? Yeah, okay, yeah. Salvage it for the pottery. We just need to have the stone cutters do their thing. I see. Okay, here we go. That's what I'm missing. And one person in the supplier making plonks. Up to 20. Can also make water skins right away. Actually prioritize that for a moment. Hopefully this will work in time. I'm a little uncertain. We'll see, I suppose. Kills people, right? No. Okay. Okay, we have the ten from the supplier already. Okay, so now we can start making pickled goods. take two minutes. Uh, that might not be fast enough. It take two minutes to make. God. Hmm. Anything else I can do? I can make a third lizard house. Yeah, we're also denying them one thing of food that they are liking, which is giving them minus one. We can get another plus one from that. We get to 11, 16. We just need two more. I don't have any building that gives lizards happiness for working in it, unfortunately. Nor do I have any water at all that I could hook up. Unless... Wait a minute. I have an idea. Dumb idea, but a good idea. Are you working on that? Stop stone cutting. Stop wood entirely, but mostly. Twelve. Oh, there we go. We're on the way to eighteen already. That wasn't so bad. Might not even need... Yeah, we actually don't need this. We've got plus one from the pie. Yes, that'll last for long enough. Okay, delete this then. Good. I see food is in a bad spot, though. Gotta be careful about that. Wait. What happened? There we go. Need to be hostility zero. Okay. There we go. There we go. Okay, that brings three more lizards, six tools, 
and some stuff. To break that open for food. We don't open that yet. This gives food too. Okay, that's good. Please use the oil. Milo. Good. Okay. Life is good. We have our second dangerous blade prepped. I guess that's going to be this one over here. We should make a warehouse over here. Ish. We should also make fabric. I don't have an easy way to make. So I have to make the workstation. Oh, the, yeah, we can delete a lizard house to get the fabric, actually. Although that does leave one person homeless. And we are making pickled goods still. It's not going to change. This is a food multiplier. Only beavers like coats. Three star copper bars is interesting. Grab a smelter. He who smeltered it, deltered it. Okay, we have lots of extra tools. Let's sell some of these. In fact, I have precisely six extra tools, so let's sell that for 18. Got a very good start on Commenda Contract here. I'm, I'm not worried at all. But of all, of all the games I play, would I say I'm the best at Slay the Spire? In terms of uh, performance rather relative to other players in the world, yeah, I think Spire is probably where I would have the biggest presence. Or I, I have the most mastery and expertise of. That sounds pretty fair to say. got built, so we want to go woodcut over there now. Just just chop through this in your own time. It'll take however long it takes. Okay, everyone's going to be really pissed off for like 14 seconds. Also going to sell a bunch of amber. Resin, rather. How do we get the commended contract? World event. Or over overworld map event. This is where that came from. There we go. No longer pissed. Excellent. 30 pie and 30 sea marrow. Also excellent. This is good. Reward for the contract is a 10 amber and three parts on every settlement from here on out. So it's a permanent upgrade to all remaining settlements, which is very appreciated, especially the 10 amber to start. Universally useful. Wait, I can favor foxes for rep during the storm? What the heck? Feels good. Give me more foxes then. Oh, now they hate me. Well, that's just fair. machinery, but more importantly, large sea marrow and a stormwater geyser. Now we're talking. A 
Hook that thing up. Two for seven. Even better deal. Another resin deal? Done. Sell all the resin. We're already halfway there, and it's only year two. it with tools or parts and containers or wildfire essence. Tear it down with planks and water to get more parts. I tear this down, but I think I'm going to need more parts. Uh, which means the supplier is going to be more planks. Okay. Perfect timing, stonecutter camp. Double trade negotiations. Interesting. Tempting. Hello. Hello. I sure have a lot of amber. You're telling me I could just straight up buy another 15 tools, too? I like it. Do I ever use haulers? No. They overstock buildings in a way that makes me very annoyed at them. Also, you don't really get them in Queen's Hand mode. Which I'm fine with. Greenhouse. Ah, yes. Greenhouse is pretty good. Oh, uh, and if we're going to do that, we could also get Insect Trap. One insect for every two mushrooms. So this becomes infinite mushrooms and infinite insects. That's pretty sweet, actually. We did just buy a double discount on the perks, so see how they're super cheap? That's on purpose. That's badass. What that is? One porridge, please. <laughs> and you know what? Yeah, I'll take double trade negotiations. Because why not? Cool. Very cool. Ah, uh, we should pick these orders now. Four rain engines. Super easy. Level up your trade routes. Also super easy. Although getting butcher for having ten lizards, which we actually already have... Actually, lizard population is very easy to do, and we get plus one to meat production. Let's do this one, and a blueprint. We already, again, have the requisite number of lizards, and I just need one more rep, <laughs> one more resolve for the lizards. So that's super easy as soon as they get a house or something. Okay, we can unpause now. Got a number of people who are busy. Does the five meat per minute count as meat production? No, it does not. Unfortunately.
Let's get two of these. Like that. Foxes like working in the greenhouses, too, so they'll give them a resolve bonus. They will surely appreciate. No leather left. Okay, so we're actually going to run out of uh, pickled goods momentarily here. Bit of a bummer. point, though. Druid's Hunt makes oil nice and easy. I like that. Can be made out of meat or plant fiber or vegetables, all of which are easy enough to get one's hands on. Still got all those biscuits I started with. Go. Probably don't even need two of those, quite frankly. So just make mushrooms. Oh, it takes drizzle water specifically? Oh, shoot. Forgot about that. I thought we could use the storm water. Y'all convinced me I could use those. I was thinking porridge. Porridge is an E water type. Well, heck. can't even use my greenhouses. This is a disaster. Concerning. No one even likes biscuits? The beavers like biscuits. The beavers will be given access to biscuits eventually. Done here. This is also done. Wait, what food options do I even have? Uh oh. Hmm. All right, time for more glades. What I learned. More glades, more blueprints. into some of these. I need more options here. Technically a small amount of food here. We're getting five meat per minute. That helps a lot. Green punk drill. And yes, some food to work with. Okay. Can panic a lot less now. So this can be fixed to spawn copper ore or disassembled. Get some oil. Disassemble that thing. Send this to the Citadel. Send this to the Citadel. Okay, that feels better. Um, actually, these even give leather, right? I want leather. Definitely want leather. What? 
wasn't finished in time. Oh, come on. <laughs> Rip. Doesn't seem like it took out the buildings, at least. Five seconds. Oops. Oh, good time to get newcomers. A lot more foxes. Bummer, man. That was a tough way to go. That is a tough way to go. Do you ever hold events like Rain Punk Drill for potential order completion later? You could do that. It's not a bad idea, actually. I usually don't. But yeah, you definitely could do that. Embarrassing. Speaking of orders, let's look at these. Trade goods. Opener send four abandoned caches of any size. Hold on. That is being sent. That is being sent. Okay, so we actually get two immediately. Okay, let's do it. Heck yeah. We get double production yield, five training gear per minute, and 15 tools. All we have to do is find and open or send two more caches. Surely that's not so hard. Uh, but that does mean we need to get into more glades quickly here. Love. We'd love to see it. Well, we can just connect enough rain engines. Doesn't give me much, though, other than a point. Lizards can suck. We do have enough parts to make a uh, water collector. Get some drizzle water if we want to. This is not the worst idea. My lizard resolve got reset. We never actually completed that. How do I evaluate six max health for a rare card on Watcher? There are a lot of Watcher duds. Um, I would look at it like check the number of ones that you consider to be good to be to be a hit at the start of the run, and you can kind of use that as your evaluation basis. For example, Lesson Learned and Ragnarok and Vault and Scrawl are all pretty good to start. Um, devotion is not bad. Judgment is not bad. So just kind of like look at the whole list of cards and see how you feel about starting with each of those. That can help you decide. Ooh, unlock all camp blueprints and upgrades all small camps to their advanced versions. But gathering speed is cut in half until we use up at least 300 resource charges. That would give us access to the large berries and large mushrooms that we don't have access to currently. Seems pretty good. Uh, what were the other options? I don't like From the Ashes. I don't like Firelink Ritual. I don't like Queen's Gift. Yeah, take Master Blueprints. So all of our camp types get upgraded. So that means this is actually going to go over here now. Okay, that solves our food problem long term. For sure. Which means we can get back to making pack of provisions momentarily. Although we need to get into this glade so we can open hopefully two more caches pretty soon. It might also take more than one dangerous glade to find two clash two caches. Clashes? Two caches. Hello, Sother. I have a lot of ember. I 
I also have a ton of sea marrow, apparently. Might buy pottery with which to make pickles. Let's do that. Which prestige difficulty makes you pay for open glades? That's one of the final ones. Yeah, prestige 19, as chat says. Not too bad. Um, need people working things they don't need to work right now. Go with one fewer stone cutter, one fewer harvester. Two more herbalists. Uh, two rain collectors for Grizzle. We should be favoring foxes here. Are there prestiges in Against the Storm? Yes, there are. 20 stacking difficulty modifiers that combine to make the game quite challenging. Pretty unique. Ah, my favorite. The Harmony Spirit Altar. Perfect. Two global resolve per service building. Although we actually don't have any service buildings unlocked currently. There's also freaking three ruins in here and one cache. Um, although not two caches, so we're going to have to open one more Dangerous Glade. Let's do this one. Oh yeah, do you have tools? No. Me neither, but we can break these open. Pretty easily. Good one to break open, actually. Okay, we're gonna need some poor things here. Haunted Cellar has three-star pickled good production. Kind of nuts. Although we won't be able to unhaunt it until you're five here. Um, what else do we get? Any geysers? No, just the more large sea marrow, which is complete overkill. That makes sense, Plockets. There is a faster gathering speed at Stonecutter's camp. Oh good, the Harvester's camp is done. Another, yeah, just delete that. Just delete that. Only 285 left. Like in this game, micromanagement is important. Yes, micromanagement can make a huge difference. That's not to say that micromanagement is required. You can do pretty well with uh, low or no micro. Well, not no necessarily, but you can do quite well with uh, relatively low micro strats, I feel like. Please cut into that faster. Ooh, Guildhouse. Guildhouse is going to be really good here. Guildhouse will give us, one, it's a service building, so it's going to make the Harmony Spirit Altar better. Speaking of, we should be calming this. Um, two. It gives us global resolve based on the amount of goods we've traded, which is going to be tons. There's our last cache. Perfect. Hey, we get a Harmony Decoration, too. This also counts as Harmony. Nice. So that's going to save me some time. Ancient Shrine. Uh, that might be a problem. Seven minutes. Oh yeah, that's a problem. Although we can just do that real fast, right? 
Yeah, we just loot that real quick. It's only a minute 19. And then we want to loot this too. Break this open. Use the stone for that. Okay, so that'll complete our chest chaser timed order. As well as both dangerous glade events before they become a problem. Yeah, that kind of micro burned. Uh, that, that's the kind of micro that I wish wasn't in the game. Stuff like juggling sacrifice or favoring during the storm to kind of finagle your way through without losing anybody. Or min-maxing your hostility level at exact moments in order to avoid penalties. Those can matter quite a bit. That's right, we're gathering mushrooms now. I was just thinking more people would be nice. Perfect. Five training gear per minute, plus 15 tools, and double export specialization. Meaning it is definitely time to start making pack of provisions again. We can do more trade routes. Clan hall for double camp yield, one of my favorites as well. And another service building. And something we can man right away, which is absurd. So that'll double camp yield plus all advanced camps unlock gives us access to essentially unlimited good resources here. These stupid rain collectors have been doing the wrong job for a while. Here, work at the greenhouse, make some mushrooms, enjoy. Tell me when you run out of duff. converting all these buildings. This would be a good time to find uh, the Explorer's Lodge. Better. Still not good, though. must be made. This is still fine. Harmony Spirit Altar converts. Now we have 11 decorations. More bricks. We can make Brickyard, though. I never actually built the Brickyard. Clan Hall yearns to be man. Oh yeah, it does. Uh, let's not allow brawling, though. Brawling is forbidden. For now.
We have double ancient uh, tablet yield from these sea marrow deposits. It's kind of nuts. It's actually insane. Already done? Yeah, it could work. Double export specialization paying off. Yard is online. Please make like a million bricks. Thank you. Pottery can come after that. Prioritize bricks, then make pottery. Use the sea marrow because I have infinite, infinite sea marrow. Pickles also become skewers, and we have. Two species that like skewers, so I'm taking Zorg's secret ingredient here. Although Deep Pockets is pretty good, too. If I buy five crystallized dew, could I do this order? Oh, yeah. Sure can. Most certainly can. I feel like we can use the Apothecary. No. Druid's Hut. No? Neither of those things. Um, and then we need to get the Haunted Cellar online. That's what we need. Let's freaking cleanse this ASAP here. A quick couple minutes. Seek 20. Get her done. Let's pick our last two orders here. Trade routes. That's happening. 40 pack of provisions in six minutes. I can do that. It's not hard. Sure. Set the limit to 40, I guess. No biggie. Do you need more drizzle water, potentially? Double insect traps for even more insects from the mushrooms? I kind of like that, actually. That means every mushroom is also an insect. Let's take that. Indeed. Thanks for your valuable feedback. Uh, ring collectors. It's fine. Should I not buy pipes? No way. I have a million pipes. We still have... Uh, where are they? Here, we still have eight pipes. And that's with indiscriminately connecting stuff that doesn't even make sense to the pipe network. Just for fun. Yeah, food is going way up here. Um, Probably hard to get a year five win. Let's make this a year six win. Somehow we've never gotten 22 Lizard Resolve again. I'm not sure what happened. Seems like a disaster. Now they're just straight pissed. They're being haunted. I'm very excited for my super powered cellar. Should definitely set a limit on flower here. Smelter can make biscuits for the beavers. They still have some. I think can make pie, to my knowledge.
Grill makes skewers, but we're gonna get skewers from the Cooper cellar. Pickle the eggs. Should limit these to a hundred. Place it there. Right over here. I'm going to be one short on the pack of provisions. My bad. Yeah, this is your six win. I'm surprised we did not actually do that in time. But with the export specializations, that would have worked. Oh well, now I just have a million pack of provisions. Oops. This will just make a crap load of money. Doesn't seem like much of a problem. Good. Climber King 2000. Thanks for the five months of support. Woot. Indeed. That's plus three global resolve. I like it. Plus two. Beanery can make porridge and, of course, crystallize do. We'll help us do the blue metal thing. Hmm. Now the lizards are finally happy. They're dropping, but not fast enough. I'll also use the forester's hut to make the metal, I guess. Traders too. Okay, yeah, lizards are done. Uh, yeah, what the trader?
Get some harmony decorations. Missing for that fabric. Yeah. The fabric. These are all kind of bad. I'm just going to take 10 amber, actually. Oh, those are cheap loot boxes, my friends. Our goal is to win this year. What's in the medium one? In wine based on ale. Okay, that was not helpful. Buy five of this, I guess. Solves my fabric problem in the short term. Great routes need to be done. Got one, two. Need more than this, yeah? I have 19 tools, enough for a cache. We could open this. ASAP. Cool. So sorry. Explorer's Lodge. There we go. Okay. That is insane. Because Explorer's Lodge will be plus one global resolve for every ruin that we have rebuilt or salvaged, which is all of these things. So many things. Summoning a new trader momentarily, too. Five minutes, no way. Do the short trade routes. One minute. Perfect seller, Zorg secret ingredient plus beaver lizard fox. Yes, it is. It sure is. It's actually insane. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it is. Even more export specialization. I have 500 uh, sea marrow, by the way. Why don't I trade you 300 of it? Which is 93 value. Give me all of your tools, some of your amber. Thanks. That also boosts my global resolve considerably. Why don't I buy all your advanced food, too? Like just all of it. Genuinely all of it. Super duper resolve. Even more export specialization. Good. Cryptid caravan. Okay, we need six purging fire. Do that this year. Cut into this. A 
tool shop can be looted for 12 tools. That's kind of cool. Alright, feels like gathering food is a complete waste of time now. You're fired. Post Explorer's Lodge. That's right, Explorer's Lodge. It's ridiculous here. Actually insane. Hilariously, the five blight rot cysts is the thing we're gonna struggle with. That's funny. Although this will help me get. Yeah, actually, uh, this will give me the blight rot cysts that I need. Good. Good. Okay, we don't need stone cutters anymore. Need blight posters. Please enable that. It has to be done fast. It's 32, okay. And then we want to man the Explorer's Lodge as well, which is one global resolve per building we've recovered, four currently. So lose the herbalist. It's the makeshift post individual. Just making pack of provisions anyway. Although it looks like they were carrying stuff. We have plenty of those, it's fine. Doot. Doot. Look at those blue numbers. 0.1 per minute. Yeah, we got this this year, no problem. Makes you wonder if playing on one higher prestige would be easier because it you get more cysts. That's an interesting idea. Probably wouldn't have thought of that. We're super there. No need to overcomplicate this. We have very clearly won this year. We'll probably overshoot it by about six points. Look at it, everybody's at 50 here. 1.17 per minute. Found a royal treasure stag. Not able to get to that though. Beavers were never given access to the biscuits. All right, now you can have biscuits. You stinky beavers. So you can be at 52. It's more like it. GG. Didn't even spawn the cysts. Wow. Talk about a decisive year six. Back to the world map. So we did it. The guild's representatives thank you for your help. But you can't shake the feeling they initially promised you a higher salary. So we get 10 amber, 3 parts for every remaining settlement. Although there are only 30 years left, so we'd better be fast here. But we're going to have to, again, beeline here. It's time to go for the... I have to go for the thing. Restock caravan. Pay 35 food, and all our starting caravans will get 30 grain and 15 pack of provisions. Done deal. Wow, look at that. We have so many bonuses, there's now an arrow button. 
Our caravans start with three wildfire essence, 30 sea marrow, 20 pipes, three parts, 15 pack of provisions, 30 oil, 30 grain, and 10 amber. That is a lot of stuff. And our next game will be a corrosive torrent. That's a pretty easy map modifier. So we should have a, a pretty easy game here. We can use this for bonus embarkation range. A little nervous here, but we should be good. May have to like bonus embark over here-ish to get more bonus range or something. Or we can just beeline for the seal. I think we can make it from here. That said, Twitch chat, this is where things are going to close for our current chapter of the Against the Storm Queen's Hand mode playthrough. With all these accumulated bonuses, it surely feels like we're well prepared for the upcoming settlements. If you have one year left, can you still start the seal? Yes. Yes. So we should be able to get five settlements in pretty decisively. Well... Maybe only four, actually. Hmm. Concerning. I'm a little worried we actually don't get far enough here. One. Two, three, four. I'm a little worried. Although as long as this finishes before the 30 year mark, I think we're okay. It's a problem for future Baylor, that's right. Lord Jesus says you can start the seal with zero years left, as long as your final settlement is within embarkation range. Okay, so what you're telling me is that I only need one year left before placing the penultimate settlement, which should go right here. So we only need one year here? If so, that's not as bad as I thought. Not as bad as I thought. You may want to veer north, depending on what this question mark is. I think we might get to see it with the bonus embarkation range after settling um, there. There. Yeah, we're out of embarkation points. We never get any more. Harpy starting with 14 tools, although not many people. Or have a bunch of wood, or uh, food rather. Seems good either way. Yeah, that is a ton of starting goods. Absurd. All right, Twitch chat. That is where I'm going to wind things down for the day. Tomorrow going to be a variety day. We're starting out the stream by finishing out our playthrough of Sea of Stars. Final installment of that uh, delightful pixel art turn-based RPG. And then we'll be doing some uh, puzzling in Patrick's Paradox after that. Yeah, probably finishing. We'll see. The goal is to finish. We got, we're starting the stream with it, so there should be plenty of time. See you later, Enma O, Twitch Taric, Explosive Ash, Die Dirty Bum Die, Blade Sound, Plockets, and everybody else. Thank you so, so much for watching. Till next time, my friends, stay cozy and have a good one. Toodaloo.